I would like to welcome everyone um, to the May 8, 2018 meeting of the City of Columbia Board of Zoning Appeals. My name is Chuck Sally and I serve as chair of the board. Uh, this time I'd like to introduce the other board members. To my far left is Reggie McKnight. Uh, immediate left is Calhoun McMeekin. To my immediate right is Gene Deacons. And uh, followed ne <laughs> next to Gene is Marcellus Primus. And then next to Marcellus is Josh Speed. Um, and that's the staff. At this time, I'd like to introduce the members of the staff that will assist the board during the meeting. The, uh, uh, Rachel Bailey, the zoning administrator, Hannah Slice, the associate planner, and Andrea Wolf, uh, the land use board coordinator. Uh, this board is charged with hearing applications for special exceptions, variances, and administrative appeals. All testimony is recorded for the record, and anyone wishing to speak will need to be sworn and must come to the podium and speak. No testimony can be taken from the floor, and when you come up to the podium, state your name, and please speak clearly into the microphone because the meeting is being recorded. For all of those who plan to speak, you must be sworn. So if you're here as an applicant or here to speak on any case, please stand at this time and raise your right hand. Do you affirm or attest that the testimony you will give today is the truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Um, before I, I turn it over to Rachel, I wanted, uh, she's going to mention this, but we've got a full house today, uh, so we will have a schedule of um, uh, three minutes um, on, the, uh, on, on each uh, person that's up to speak. Um, there is a, a, a quite annoying little green, yellow, and red light right there on the podium that you can see. Um, so um, uh, I'm not uh, going to, uh, and Calhoun will actually be chairing uh, this board on, on uh, at least one of the uh, um, applications today because uh, I'll have to recuse myself. But when we, um, we're not trying to be rude, but um, we will thank you for your testimony when the red light comes on and you'll need to sit down. Um, we would also ask that you try to keep all of the testimony um, that we have today relevant to the matters that we're here, which are the, um, uh, this, the uh, listed um, uh, uh, criteria for a variance or a special exception. Um, and that's what we can, we can hear and uh, if we can try to keep it that way. And if anyone um, or group is here and they want to have a, a spokesperson for that group and have you know they can come before us and they can stand up if they like and ask the people that they're speaking for to stand up and we can acknowledge that that's fine but you will have to come to the podium to speak and I think that's all I wanted to say Rachel I'm gonna let you take it over from here thank you all right, good morning I wanted to touch on a few changes to the agenda before we got started this morning um, item number three, case 2018-0032. It's a special exception to lease remote parking. Um, it was originally on consent. We've received a request to place it on the regular agenda. So it'll be heard on the regular agenda today. And then item number six, 2018-0035. It's a special exception for 3421, 23, and 23 and a half North Main. That has been deferred until next month by the applicant. So um, to follow up on what Chuck had said this morning, for the meeting format, we will be using timers. We want to make sure everyone has a chance to speak today. So applicants are given <coughs> 10 minutes to do their presentation, and that includes anyone speaking with the applicant. So an attorney or a representative, that all counts in the 10 minutes. <coughs> However, if the board stops for discussion or to ask questions, that does not count against the applicant. Members of the public are given three minutes to speak, or if they're representing a group of three or more, they're given five minutes. So and then the applicant does have time for rebuttal. Again, if the board does stop to ask a member of the public a question, that time's not going to count against you. <laughs> So the first matter of business is the consent agenda. The board uses the consent agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion. If a member of the board or the public wants to discuss an item on the agenda, that item is removed and considered on the regular agenda during the meeting. So the first matter on the consent agenda 
is to approve the April minutes, the April 10th, 2018 minutes. And then item number two, case 2018-0030, it's a variance for 4101 Round Top Road. It's a variance to the fence height requirements. Item number four, case 2018-0033, it's 126 Atlas Court, variance to the off-street parking requirements. And item number five, 2018-0034, it's a special exception, 2917 Rosewood and 2909 Rosewood, special exception to lease remote parking. Make a, uh, make a motion to approve the April 10, 2018 minutes, as well as the new business um, number two, four, and five as, as provided in the um, information from staff. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Consent agenda carries. All right, on the regular agenda, the first matter is item number eight, case 2018-0013. It's a variance, it's 3006 Divine Street, and that's the variance to the off-street parking requirement for a proposed restaurant. There is an associated application with that today. It is item number 12, case 2018-0036. It's a special exception to lease remote parking along with that variance. Um, if the board wishes, um, they can make a motion to hear those cases simultaneously. Make a motion to hear uh, uh, case 2018-0013, a variance for 3006 Divine Street, as well as 2018-0036, uh, a special exception for 3006 and 3014 Divine Street um, at the same so time. We, we will um, hear these together, but we will also make our findings and, and approve both separately. I think I'll look to staff for some help that it would probably, um, should we hear the special exception I first? Give, yeah, I'll give some background to the board. Um, the special exception, what that is doing is to lease remote parking at the neighboring parcel, and it is for 10 spaces. Those spaces are to be available from 5.30 to close Monday through Friday, and for all hours of operation, Saturday and Sunday, the parking will be exclusive for the restaurant during the time of the lease. The variance is still being applied for because that lease is not for the full hours of operation. So for certain hours from opening until 5.30 during the week, only the 18 spaces that are available on site will be available. So that is why they are both being heard together from 5.30 to close Monday through Friday and on the weekends. The applicant is providing 28 spaces from opening until 5.30 on Monday through Friday, only 18. If you can also make the clarification, or make sure that I, I think I understand this, but it's a special exception um, that gives the city the, avail the, the, the ability to enforce the lease Correct. parking. The special exception for lease parking gives the city a mechanism of enforcement. As opposed to when somebody comes for a reduction with a variance, there, there's not any... Yeah, instead of making it a condition to the variance, as part of the variance, the special exception is its own animal to provide that mechanism. Okay. This applicant um, here, uh, again, we'll go with 2018-0036, a special exception for 3006 and 3014 Divine Street. Hey, sir. Thank you for... Uh, here us. My name is Frank Kaysen. I'm with Kaysen Development Group. Uh, we are uh, the applicant for this project. And again, we came before you uh, last month uh, with just a variance request. Rachel's pretty much outlined the, the details of it, but uh, at, at the uh, suggestion of this uh, board last time, we uh, are now tie essentially tying the additional, some additional parking spaces to this uh, property uh, via a special exception. So. Uh, it does require us to uh, notify the city if there is uh, a termination of the lease, and uh, the city also has the right to um, see the see the parking lease every 12 months. So, um, again, as a 
reminder about what we're doing here, there were a couple of renderings that were shown, but this is a conversion of a, um, currently an office building, Remax Real Estate, and we plan to uh, open up the front of the building um, and provide some open air, outdoor covered seating for a new restaurant, Back Streets. Uh, we remain excited about the opportunity to bring this uh, family owned, uh, operated, and, and family friendly restaurant to uh, Divine Street and to the city of Columbia to fill what we feel is a, um, a hole in the mid upper range uh, price point for, uh, for families. Um, they, they are here if you'll have uh, a desire to speak to them, ask them any questions. Um, again, this is one of the, the um, parking arrangements that we referred to in our last meeting and uh, we are tying it now to the um, special exception and variance request here. So if you guys have any questions, we are here. Would you mind running through the, the criteria for the special exception? From the, from the application? Mm -hmm. Yes, we got it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, do you mean the... You would just go through the... Submittal. Right, it would be on... Yep. Uh, describing what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on vehicular traffic, uh, et cetera, or vehicular and pedestrian safety and how adequate provisions have been made. Uh, will not have an adverse impact because the necessary and required amount of parking uh, for this use is provided in the attached parking lot. It will, uh, number two, describing what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on adjoining properties in terms of environmental factors, noise, light, glare, vibration, fumes, odors, obstruction of air, light, and litter. Uh, we do not believe it will have an adverse impact since we are proposing to use uh, existing parking lots that are, that are in place right now. Uh, describe what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on the aesthetic character of the area to include a review of the orientation and spaces of the buildings. Uh, we're not moving any uh, buildings uh, around. We're keeping existing building structures and again, uh, it's consistent with the aesthetic of the character of the area. We're keeping the parking lots in place and intact. I described the ways in which the proposed special exception will not have an inverse adverse impact on public safety or create nuisance conditions detrimental to the public interest or conditions likely to result in increased law enforcement response. Uh, again, similar, same responses. These are existing parking lots that are both uh, connected uh, and behind our building and the building next door. Um, explain how the establishment of the proposed special exception does not create a concentration or proliferation of the same or similar types of the special exception use, which concentration may be detrimental to the development or redevelopment of the area in which the special exception use is proposed to be developed. Uh, other properties in the area uh, do not have uh, special exceptions, uh, whether they were grandfathered or, or otherwise. Um, but we, we have not found one for uh, least off-site parking. Um, there may be one there that we're not aware of. Explain how the proposed special exception is consistent with the character and intent of the underlying district uh, as indicated in the zoning district description. With any applicable zoning overlay district goals and requirements, uh, the proposed special exception allows us to utilize the property to the best and highest use that the, the zoning currently allows. Again, as a point of clarification, the current zoning does allow for uh, a restaurant. And describe how the proposed special exception is appropriate for its location and compatible with the permitted uses adjacent to and vicinity of the property. Uh, it is, we believe, is appropriate due to the lack of on-site parking and the uh, proximity to other restaurants. It should also be noted that this property has um, more on-site parking than any restaurant in the area, with the exception of um, Herb Cookhouse ne next door. Explain in what ways the proposed special exception will not adversely affect the public interest. It, we believe it will benefit the public interest, I'll, I'll be that a uh, um, subjective and biased comment, but that uh, it will benefit the public interest by providing more than the, um, the more parking than we currently have on site, as well as a new restaurant facility. Any other questions? 
Yeah, the, specifically, the, the site next door where the 10 proposed spaces are, it looks like, are there more than 10 spaces in that rear lot? There are more than that, yes. <coughs> um, we discussed, um, vaguely discussed or broadly discussed the opportunity to get more down the road, um, but right now that was as many as they wanted to commit to. What, what is that um, currently? Is that an office as well? It's an office building, yeah, Sadler Insurance. And there are two other office tenants in there, smaller tenants, I can't remember. So you would be using their spaces after their hours? That's right. Okay. Is there any sort of dividing uh, raised curb or median or anything yeah. in between the site? There is, good question. You can barely see it to where the blue and red <laughs> meet. Mm -hmm. um, there's two individual cars that are almost mm -hmm. head to head there. Uh, there is a dividing line right there. There's also a, a tree right there at the end. So it's, it's a very clear um, distinction between the parking lots. And we've had a number of discussions with Mr. Sadler on how we're going to delineate with um, you know, a sign right when you drive in, which should be relatively uh, easy to facilitate. So there will be signage yes. on the property. I think that that was a concern that I read from. There, there will be signage. Um, there's required signage based on the special exception um, requirements, and then we're going to go above and beyond that as well and put put signs right at the, at the entrance so there's so um, people will know. So it's very clear, yeah, that you are where the parking is. And there's sort of a shared driveway between them. How how does how would you a pedestrian walk from their car to the restaurant? There's actually a um, there is a shared driveway. It's a very wide driveway. It's actually been recently paved and concrete. Um, it's that entire area, Mr. Dinkins, between the two buildings. And there's a sidewalk on that side of Divine Street. And there is a sidewalk on that side of Divine Street as well. Yes. And this, effectively, I don't want to be too specific, but initially you had asked for a 50% reduction, and by doing this, this brings it down by probably another 25 or 30 percent if I'm doing my math right. Yeah and this just for point of reference we compared this to um, other areas in the city not that that's uh, the entire criteria for this but um, we compared it to the to uh, five points um, North Main area and the Vista uh, so we're at 28 spaces uh, if we were in five points we would be at uh, we would be required to have 29 spaces. If we were in North Main, it would be a requirement to have 29 spaces. If we were in the Vista, it would be a requirement to have 22 spaces. Um, so five points in North Main both have a 20% uh, parking reduction. Uh, Vista has 40%. Main Street, of course, has a zero parking requirement. So same restaurant in Main Street would be zero. Anyone else on the board that has questions for the applicant? Thank you. Um, again, we're, we're going to uh, invite the public up to, to come speak. Um, I do just want to reiterate from the zoning from the zoning staff and from Mr. Sally that um, we're going to use the timers today on all the cases. And again, if you could be um, specific about this is a special exception to lease remote parking so we'd really like to keep it to that so if there are other issues that people have with this application that aren't related to parking just understand that we are not the forum to, to air those in so with that being said if, if anybody would like to come and speak in favor or in opposition to this special exception please do so Bob Hallman, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. I'm uh, a resident of Capitol Place, which is just around the corner from this building, probably three buildings away. Um, I, I would just note when you asked the question, uh, Mr. McMeekin, about what he had placed in his special exception application, I would assert that they're all just conclusory. It asks for description, but there's no description. They're all conclusory and I would assert that some of them are simply wrong, where he talks about having more spaces than required. He simply doesn't have more spaces than required. Um, 
in that vein, if I might, I'd like to I look back or listen to the tape from last time. And he came in here and told you that he was going to have 49 spaces and wanted to, he said, I have 10 here, I have 12 here, and I have nine here, and I have commitments from these people. And he may have held up a piece of paper, but he said he had at least a written commitment. And you ask him about leases, uh, talked with him about feeling more comfortable if this was in writing, he even talked about the lease should match the lease for the restaurant. He actually said, I don't feel comfortable taking that risk. But he said at that time that he had those commitments, and now he comes here and he only has one lease. He doesn't have those others. So I don't know what occurred there, but that was not accurate in what he was presenting to you before. I would suggest to you most respectfully that his special exception application fails to meet the law. There are a number of conditions. The board is, of course, uh, established by statute, and the statute that establishes this board says that you have to meet certain conditions in order to exercise your discretionary power. You have the power to grant a special exception but it says that you must do so, um, that you must do so by, if he's going to ask for remote parking, meet the conditions that are in there. There are two that he simply does not meet. One is number C, the least, the least must specify that the parking spaces are exclusive for the use of the prospective user and also that they've got to be marked individually, not as a group. And to get a basis of what that means, the one before that, before they speak of leased parking, they speak of the owner can go and use one of his own areas. One of his own areas, I wanted to ask for five minutes, please. By the way, I'm speaking for the members of Capitol Place, as well as two or three of the other folks that are sitting here with me. The if that's the case, then that's fine, but, but, but we need to stick with the, if you can grant him an extra two minutes, but then no one else from your group is, if you're going to take their time, we need to honor that. We understand that, yes, sir. Okay. Um, so it's, it's my assertion that he does not meet that because it is not exclusive. In A, in remote parking, when someone can go off and use their own parking, it says in there that only the parking for the prospective user can use that. So that's what this remote parking is about, that it's exclusive. And the word exclusive is pretty clear to, to everyone. You know, it's not exclusive if you can't use it half the day. You wouldn't want to explain that to a girlfriend, that you want to be in an exclusive relationship and then describe it like this. I don't think that would get very far. So I would submit to you that there, the special exception has not pushed this ball along any further as you all were hoping in your last, your April 10th meeting when you sent Mr. Kaysen away and Kaysen Development to do that. Um, when the special exception fails, I'm asserting to you that his application for a variance fails on a legal ground, that he is required to show, yes, you can grant a variance, but you grant variances for unnecessary hardship. And he is required to demonstrate that he has an unnecessary hardship in regard to four conditions set forth by the statute and by the code. And the very first one says that there are no extra, that there have to be extraordinary conditions pertaining to this particular piece of property. It's only extraordinary because it's simply too small for a restaurant. It's been a business for 50 something years. It's been an office building, it's been used. So it's not that um, this is some special having to do, I think it talked about shape, size, topography. Then he goes into talking about this is the best use. Well, that simply means it's the most financial. That was my five minutes. May I ask a question? Please. So when you say exclusive use with the off-site parking, so what you're saying is, is that if someone has to get off-site parking, whether it's in the Vista, Five Points, that they have to have the exclusive use of it 24-7? A 
certainly during their operating hours so that it's available to them. I don't know about the 24-7. I'm new to zoning laws. I've just been looking at them and trying well, to I just, understand. I mean, I, to, to use, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to be cute, but if you're going to be exclusive to your wife, it's out for 24-7 or from 7 to 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. So what I'm trying to, to, to get in my mind is because I think it's a conundrum. If you make that assertion, then there wouldn't be any off you know, there wouldn't be any availability for someone to go and get off-site lease parking. Well, Section 17.345 says that it must be exclusive for the use of the building, and each spot must say that it's exclusively for the use of the proposed user. And the Supreme Court has defined various terms. It didn't define for me the word exclusive, but it certainly has defined uh, what a hardship is, and your own code says that this best use thing, that, that financially you cannot consider the fact that it may be a, right. a negative impact to this gentleman's business. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your testimony. Good morning. I'm Canson Foster. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Backstreet's Grill. Uh, I am also a uh, business owner and a resident of Shandon. Uh, in fact, my office, uh, the two buildings on the far left-hand side on the corner of Capitol Place and Divine Street are mine. I've been there since 2007. I've maintained a residence in Shandon since 2001, and I'm a Columbia native. Um, during the time that I've been on Divine Street and in Columbia, I have noticed a dramatic change in the character of Divine Street and Shandon. And I absolutely equate that with the quality of the development of the restaurants that have come in um, with Urban Cookhouse, with um, Cantina 76, with, uh, you know, uh, you name it, um, there's uh, Tallulah's. Uh, it's just, there, there's a new atmosphere and a vibe to Divine Street, and it's absolutely the direct result of some really good quality restaurants. Um, Divine Street has become a place where families can walk the street, stop it at one restaurant or another, and a lot of these restaurants get their um, traffic through, um, through walking. Um, I, 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 when my kids were really young, I'd put them in a wagon and we would walk down the street and we'd go to one restaurant or another, and we still do that. Uh, we hold hands now instead of riding in wagons. Um, and I am absolutely in support of uh, this, this premise being turned into a restaurant. I think it'll be good for Divine Street, it'll be good for Shandon, and it'll be good for our property values. I've never known a good restaurant to go into a neighborhood uh, where the property values didn't increase. And I think there, with the closing of Harper's and the closing of Divine Foods, there's a need for a good family-oriented quality restaurant. Um, I've met the owners of the restaurant. They're good folks. They have a long tradition of, of running a restaurant uh, in Hickory, North Carolina. And as to the character of the restaurant, the fact that one of the many letters of recommendation y'all have is from the chief of police of Hickory, says a lot about their character. Um, I want to talk to the, the special criteria that y'all are looking at, and, and obviously the issue today is parking. Um, and I love this picture that y'all have put up. It's an old picture, but if you look at the other side of Divine Street, there are empty parking spaces all along. There's actually 12 of them, and those parking spaces are always empty. Uh, my office looks at those parking spaces. They're never used. So, uh, to the extent that there is an issue with uh, parking at all, um, please be aware that there are 12 empty parking spaces every day on Divine Street that, that are available. Um, also, this is an old picture because the, uh, my favorite, was it my favorite place uh, where Urban Cookhouse uh, is, is in this picture, um, and the aesthetics have changed. Um, I love that old house and I hated to see it go, but as far as the manicuring and, and the condition of that site, it's actually a much nicer site with, with Urban, Urban Cookhouse there. Um, I believe that the uh, issues as far as the exclusivity of these parking spaces is absolutely addressed in the lease. During the time that those leases are being in front of you, it's, it's addressing the lease, which y'all have um, uh, copies of, which clearly says that those are exclusive to this business, and, and, and I think there'll be no issue. I, honestly, uh, when you go through the criteria, um, the only time that there's a substantial impact uh, I don't see any substantial impact on vehicular traffic, the impact on the Foster, neighboring thank properties. Will be positive. There's going to have to be a stickler today with these cases. I, I so that. Thank appreciate you your, your testimony, but you're out of time. Thank you. Good morning. Um, Are you with the Capital Group that, with Mr. Hallman? Yes. 
I'm sorry, but he took your time when he when we granted him, and I and I stated that if he did that, that we were going to have two to. Two sentences. Uh, uh, we 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 just have got to be consistent. Mr. Are Holman you, made the assertion. Are you, are, you, are you saying, sir, that the Capitol Place people have no more time? I'm saying that Mr. Holman took your time, yes, ma'am, and I Mr. asked Holman, that, and I qualified, I, and I qualified that. No, if, if I, because, just because he's my he husband. was here to represent those who were not able to attend today. Okay. So everyone else, they just have the three minutes. I apologize. Yeah, that's I, 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 I apologize. Take it. I'm not. Yeah. All right. Very quickly, I, w I just want to respond to uh, Mr. Kaysen's <clears throat> comparison of the Vista requirements and the five points requirements for parking is meaningless. Look at the Vista. It's an urban atmosphere. It's a completely different atmosphere in terms of parking and how people live in lofts and stuff. Five points itself, not the outer edges of five points, but five points is a completely, it, it, it's moot. There's no comparison between Shandon a historic neighborhood that's enormous residential area to five points what they require the point is years ago from the divine Tr street corridor study that was done when i was on shandon neighborhood council these decisions about 36 parking spaces and such and c2 were made then by a group of multifaceted people, including the neighborhood council, making these decisions. They were made for good reason. No matter what is said, they have 28 parking spaces when they should have 36. Why are we looking at changing regulations for something that was research decided because of the beauty and the specialness of the neighborhood years ago? The other thing he says about 50 parking, whoever this other person was, who said something about 50 parking spaces, I don't know how much time y'all spend there, but there are not 12 or whatever was said parking spaces available at lunchtime and supper time on Divine Street. We live there. They're not there. Um, these 50 parking spaces on the street, this, this restaurant, which is, going to be a nice restaurant somewhere. It's going to be a great place, I think. But this restaurant would be the seventh restaurant in one and a half blocks. If you walk that, I mean, it's nowhere to walk. It's one and a half blocks, seven restaurants. We're already tremendously overloaded. Where are these additional 10 spaces going to go into our streets like they already do? The other thing, one more point, um, is that what a, I'm sorry, but what a joke that they don't get their additional 10 spaces beyond their 18 until 5.30 when they plan to have a very active lunch hour. They, ha they don't have 28 spaces for their lunch hour. They have it for 5.30 and on. I really hope you'll consider the neighbors, the neighborhood. I beg you to consider the neighborhood. Quick question. Ma'am. Ma'am. Just quick question. When you served on that board, just roughly when 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 that work was done. The Divine Street Corridor? Yes, ma'am. How how long ago was that? Twenty years. No, no, well, the reason why I'm asking is that Divine Street's come a long way, like other parts of the city, in, in 20 years. Divine and Street has come a long way, but you still protect the, at the inner edges. You, there are reasons why it was not made commercial for a block or so from Divine Street. And I'm telling you, seven restaurants in one and a half blocks, they're trying to shoehorn in a nice place, but it's the wrong place. They're trying to shoehorn it in where it's not appropriate. It's not, it's not that the restaurant is not appropriate. It's appropriate somewhere. But if you walk that place, if you just go look at it, it's a little tiny narrow space is inappropriate. So 
you recall, it sounds like you've been there for a while, but were, the, were there residential, were there people living in houses on Divine Street? Absolutely. 20 years ago? Good friends lived right on the place that's now a lawyer's office, yes. One, yes. So things have changed in the last 20 years. Oh, I don't question that things have changed. I think we still need to protect. Things were changed. I've lived on Divine Street for 30 plus years. Things on one end of Divine Street have always been different, more commercial. Things on our end, again, I will say to you, seventh restaurant in one and a half blocks with 10 less parking, eight less parking spaces than they need at night and 10 less during the day. You know, 18 during the day, 28 at night when the regulation says 36. I'm telling you, it's already a terrible problem on the side streets. Talk to anybody who lives on Holly Street. It's sad. Or Sims. It's not, it's difficult. People don't have places for their own guests and family members coming to, to park at night. So. Thank you. My name is Tom Carlisle. I'm uh, president of the Oakwood Court Neighborhood Association. Oakwood Court is a um, neighborhood that uh, abuts Divine Street right across the street. The church uh, that you see the steeple in the picture is a member of that organization. And I'm here to um, represent it. We, uh, we poll the neighborhood and of those responding, an overwhelming majority uh, were against allowing the parking, the, the uh, lack of parking uh, to, uh, to stand. The, um, I'd like to reiterate that there were, there's uh, 36 spaces required, 28 are available at night, but only 18 during the day. Uh, if you drive to lunch, You'll be driving, you'll, you'll probably go to meet somebody. Lunchtime uh, parking is a premium, and we're concerned about spillover. Uh, uh, the 10 spaces available in the Sadler building are not available uh, during lunchtime. Those 10 spaces get eaten up on the street, and then you have spillover into uh, the neighborhood streets, uh, Amherst in particular, but others, Capitol as well. Um, so for that reason, I'd like to uh, say that we oppose that. Also, I think uh, some, some attention needs to be given to where they're going to put their dumpster. Um, restaurant presumably requires a dumpster. Uh, how many spaces is that going to use up uh, uh, in their property? It's not going to go in the Sadler's property. Uh, and with that... Um, I'd like to say, even if you pass this, uh, there's still going to be short six spaces, uh, or eight, sp uh, eight spaces, I'm sorry. Uh, so they're going to be short regardless. It's the lunchtime uh, for, uh, shortfall that I'm mostly concerned about. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Susan Craig. Um, live on Amherst Avenue in the Oakwood Court neighborhood for 32 years almost. I'm here to oppose this special exception based on the criteria that are listed on the website that I've gone through. Um, I'm not going to reiterate what others have said, but my belief is that this will be a high traffic establishment if it's successful. It will definitely increase congestion and add to pedestrian hazards. The parking that he referred to is across the street. Human nature proves that people are not going to walk to the light to cross. They will be jaywalking across Divine Street. Um, I, I think that it's a flimsy application. Um, the parking leases in place are for year to year. We have no guarantee for future. Um, as everyone else said, it, they're available from 5.30 p.m. on. What about busy lunch hours? Um, and, and one of your criteria addresses 
the concentration or proliferation of the same or similar types of special exceptions. Well, that to me is key. There's a concentration of this kind of exception for restaurants slash bars would drastically impact long-time neighborhoods as well as incarnate the Lutheran Church and its child care center. Noise, lighting, truck traffic for trash and food delivery would, if proliferated, proliferated would begin to erode quality of life for hundreds of long-time neighbors that have been there a lot longer than any restaurants. And I, I've, I'm very offended by uh, back streets justifying their lack of adequate parking by comparing this with others' restaurants' lack of parking. Is that what the board will make their decision upon? Um, this is a very short-sighted reasoning. Is the board good, will the board consent to adding parking problems on top of other parking problems? Um, the Sunday hours, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., would create a nightmare of parking <coughs> issues for the churchgoers and as well as for adjoining neighborhoods. And I ask you to decline this special exception. And I'm among many, uh, many uh, longtime Columbia neighbors who post this. Thank you. <coughs> you. <coughs> I'm Leah Lake, and I live at 605 Capitol Place. And that's my property right behind the building. There's an old fence that lines the building, and I, I wanted to come and um, tell you that I oppose the exception to adding more parking spaces, probably for selfish reasons. Um, I am doing my best to conserve that home for future generations. I don't know who will buy it when I, I sort of have a conservator's heart. And I'm concerned about those trees and the pollution, uh, the inebriated and um, inebriated people. This is a bar and grill. It, now they're calling it a restaurant. but. No one representing that have come and talked to me. No one has come and talked to me about my property. And I'm going to be the one most affected. So um, thank you for your service, to, for listening to people like me, um, who are citizens, good neighbors. Some of the businessmen and women here are my neighbors and friends, Mr. Sadler, Thousand, and I. Uh, we do our best as business owners and residential to cherish the neighborhood. It's a very wonderful democratic area. It's a diverse neighborhood. We have students, families. Um, there is a lot of walking traffic, but I can't get out of my home. You see it there? I can't get out of my home on Friday nights and Saturday nights due to those six restaurants. And also, I would like to tell you that I'm a frequent, since I am a conservator of land and trees and things like that, birds, I go behind those parking lots, not every day, but I pick up all the um, condoms and I pick up the uh, hypodermic needles. Uh, they're, they're, the parking lots are policed very well now. We have very good service, but um, if you would ever like to walk with me and see what are in the parking lots, and you see those trees in the back, there's going to be a big giant canister of leftover refuse right by my home. So, <coughs> thank you. Um, I want you to know that um, I'm a charter member of, um, I, know, I know you do, and I know, but I'm not just an old white woman trying to protect a white neighborhood of rich people. I'm a sharecropper's daughter. And I grew up in the fields in Aiken County, and I'm a charter member of. Group therapy in five points when I was a student. So I ask you to be protective of our neighborhood if you can. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Ronnie Turner. I live at 603 Capital Place. Uh, Sir, if you side. don't mind, could you speak into the microphone? Okay. Uh, I live at 603 Capital Place on the mm -hmm. other side of Lear. 
Would you state your name we again? Pardon? Would you state your name again, please? I'm sorry. Your Would name? you state your name again, please? Yes, Lonnie Turner. Thank you. Okay. Um, we already have a problem here. There's an outfit called Lasco in the corner. They don't have enough parking in their space, so they come park all the way down the street. They park in front of my house. I put my trash out. <clears throat> they run over it, push it out in front of my driveway. I have to get out and come in. And this happens all the time. It's been about 10 times this has happened. And they also park on the corner, the corner house in front of it. I just want to let you know we already have a problem parking there. And this is just going to add to it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Anthony Carboni. Um, I have an office at 719 Divine Street, just up the street from the other side. I live in Forest Acres. I've had businesses here for over 10 years. We have a group of us friends that live in Shandon and Five Points and Forest Acres collectively. We go to different restaurants around the city every week. Usually once a week, we'll go to either Cantina 76 or Urban. Um, I have no parking issue because I have my office at 719 Holly, but we all take Ubers and meet the others that walk. So I just wanted to point out, I haven't heard that mentioned, Uber as, as um, something that may be affecting some of these ordinances and parking requirements from years ago. Um, at least me and several of my friends, we take Ubers just for the convenience and not drinking and driving. So ask you to consider that because we were pretty excited about another restaurant opening that we could add to our repertoire. Thank you. Anyone else is speaking in favor of or in opposition to? Hello, folks. How are y'all? My name is Emil DeFelice. Thank you for allowing me to speak for just a minute here. <clears throat> I'm I've owned three homes and still do, uh, well, own one home now, but in the immediate vicinity. And the reason a lot of people live there is because we can walk. It is the only truly pedestrian community. And I'd say it would beat Main Street because we have a grocery store and, and well, choices of grocery stores. That's a big reason people live in Shannon because we like to walk places. And as, as the gentleman just mentioned, there's also Uber and whatnot. A big reason that Charleston is so popular for tourists is because there's no parking and there's 20 restaurants a block. The line that was referred to between commercial and residential, and I, I do understand where that comes from because that is the way we've built a lot of our municipal areas, that's a thing of the past. Another thing you love about Charleston is that you're walking along a normal neighborhood and there's a fish shop or a convenience store or something odd right in the middle of a neighborhood. These are real neighborhoods. That's the way the world has thrived. And what we did when we diverted this with these hard lines, <clears throat> it didn't really do us any favors. I did write you a letter, which I hope you got, that mentioned the automotive and transportation revolution that is already underway. And that is going to continue. If I had my druthers, I would take away most parking lots, and then you really won't have a problem with cars at all. Because we're putting people on the street from A to B in many different ways these days. And that's going to accelerate, as I said in the letter, just like none of us can remember how in the world we got along without a cell phone. So whoever can figure out what to do with the used asphalt in about 10 years is going to make a trillion dollars. Because there's going to be a ton of it. We don't need that five lane street, Divine. We can use three lanes and do a property give back. That's, that's really where it's heading if you've studied these issues. So I hope that you pass this in the spirit of modernity, in the spirit of uh, urban development that reflects many uh, of the most successful and popular cities in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to, to speak? Does the applicant want to uh, come back and address or anything that was said by the public or to 
clarify anything. There were a, a few things I think about. Um, just didn't know if you wanted the opportunity to, to speak to maybe dumpster placement was one thing that I heard. M might have been the only thing I heard, but yeah, there, there was a, <clears throat> a point made about a dumpster, and um, we have there's a can't see it in this area, but there's a portion of the building that sticks out. It's kind of a shed. It's attached to the building. We're gonna be tearing that down. It's not currently in a parking spot. We're gonna be tearing that down for a dumpster. Um, I, I would just, I guess, close with it. There was a, a comment that was made, sounded like by those uh, opposed and, and for that uh, divine has come a long way. And um, I think most would say that's been a positive thing that divine street has, has come a long way. And uh, and there are many to uh, Mr. De Felice's point who would say contend that seven restaurants on a block is a really positive thing and and there are a lot who would say wow how awesome that we have seven restaurants on a block now the divine street merchants association who's supportive uh, and has written you all a letter they're uh, in favor of this I, I think they would laud that as um, a huge uh, victory for divine street and i think my guess would be those in city government and uh, the mayor etc would probably I laud that as, as positive things. And, however, that, with that said, there, with growth, there's always difficulty, and there's no question about that, and we are um, not immune to that fact, and that's, that is the reason why we've come back with uh, adding these things, and we've, um, we've got a, a number of parking-related concerns uh, that we knew about initially ourselves and that we focused on from day one before we even heard the complaints and frustrations of, of neighbors who've been there a very long time and, and they're legitimate. And so we're um, seeking to do everything we can to alleviate those, uh, those concerns. Um, and uh, protection is, is, a, um, is a word that both sides or different people can have a different definition of. Um, some want protection against the car parking in front of their house. and. Um, that is public right of way. They can't protect against that, but I, but I understand as well the concerns that that brings. But some want protection for property values as well. And, and I think that most would contend that new restaurants, new uh, retail, et cetera, new investment in an area provides increase in property value too. So um, but we, we believe that protection is important and we value the um, place that you guys are, are in here and we are doing what we, we can with the addition of the special exception uh, to the variance request to continue to add uh, parking here. So with that, if, if y'all had anything you want us to clarify, um, just one point that uh, I didn't bring up earlier, we did, it's not, it has not been adopted yet, but I know you're all, all aware of the um, new zoning ordinance that is, has been proposed. Just for, um, for what it was worth, we did compare to see what we would fall under and how many parking spaces we would be required under that new code. Again, it has not been adopted. I don't know when it will be, so it, it is completely unofficial, but we are um, well above what would, would be required uh, on that code, in that code. Are there any Just other questions from the board for the applicant? At this point, I'm going to close testimony and um, go to board discussion. Um, and I'll just open that up to the, to the board. Yeah, I think we've seen a lot of these parking-related issues, certainly, in the past. Um, it seems half of our discussions are now parking-related. Um, and going back to, I served for many years on the City Planning Commission, and I noticed this trend as we were um, <coughs> discussing the many alternative for modes of transportation and um, a lot of biking and a lot of walking and then Uber sort of hit the scene also and and you really you can feel the, the, the people people are getting to these restaurants and these different sites now in different ways than just the standard um, Drive your car and park. And um, I live in the neighborhood as well. And my wife and I walked up to Urban Cookhouse the other day. And it was interesting. We were walking up there. And I noticed there wasn't a single car in the parking lot. And this was on the side of, um, I guess we were walking up Sims. And this was on the side of the Sims side of the building. And we said, gosh, is it closed? 
And uh, we walked inside, and there were a bunch of people inside. And there were a few cars on the other side of the building. This was one of the really nice Saturday afternoons. And it, it made me think then, wow, people really are walking more to these um, restaurants. So I, th- I, think, I think Mr. Kaysen and Backstreets have done a good job, um, you know, trying to meet in the middle, so to speak, and uh, done a good job with compromising here. Um, I think... I had some concerns at the last meeting, but tying these extra 10 spaces to the site have alleviated some. And practically speaking, I do think you have enough parking. Um, you know, I, I think times are changing, and I think people are using these alternate modes of transportation that were discussed by others here today, and um, I think it can work. I. I agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, heartily. I <clears throat> I attend church um, about a mile mile down the street, uh, Bethlehem and me, and I totally agree. And like, actually, two Sundays ago, I left church and I parked um, I parked uh, in the in the vicinity, and I actually walked. I mean, I didn't I didn't I didn't park there, but I, I walked. I, I totally agree with you, saying. So. I make a motion that. It, ahead, we're, we're oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. More part of discussion. But that's it. I mean, I totally agree with you, Chuck. Anybody else? I'll call you, Chuck. I'm sorry. You know, a couple of things. I want to clarify. Well, let, let me back that up by saying this. Um, I think I've been on this board for two terms. I think going on 10 years, and I'm, I see somebody on the back row. I've really come to appreciate people who come and fight for their neighborhoods um, because I think it's important. Um, but neighborhoods change. Um, and that's why I was asking some of those questions. But, you know, the Divine Street corridor has changed over the years. I didn't realize I like history and genealogy. My great great grandfather lived in Mr. Foster's house. Um, that was back in the 20s and 30s. Um, you know, the Oakwood Court, y'all, y'all's neighborhood has changed. I mean, the church bought up. It was awkward. I, I had a listing on Kirkwood, and the seller did not, because they were invested in the neighborhood, they did not want to sell it to the church. And that's nothing against the church. And I remember asking the guy who brought the offer, if you're a straw man for the church, my seller doesn't want to sell. They brought a full price offer, and that's exactly what they did. They flipped it to the church. And again, I'm not vilifying the church, but I'm just going to illustrate that neighborhoods change. Um, you know, Millwood was not always, you know, y'all have now got up that, that, that they had to come in front of us. There's a credit union. Um, but it's also healthy. I put a house on the market on Amherst. Um, higher than I recommended to my client, and I looked a little foolish, I guess, when it sold for full price in 24 hours. Um, you're seeing the property values go up in Columbia for different reasons, and I think we need to strike a balance. Um, you know, last month, I was not for just giving a 50% reduction um, with that variance, and I am convinced that, that, that this is the way to go, that, that, that it's a special exception that provides for this. And, you know, last month I made the comment, and I think it was taken a little bit out of context, but, it was, but, but I said it to, I guess if you want to look at it this way, to kind of try to protect the neighborhood um, for people who live blossom over who live on Sims and Holly and Capitol and all these different places. Um, If we had tied the leases to the lease of the restaurant, um, you know, in my mind, I thought, I thought it was almost a little punitive, but what I figured out is that if we did that, the city can't enforce it. Um, And they can with a special exception. So every year when Backstreet's or whomever when a restaurant who's got parking that's provided for, um, there's a mechanism that, that the city can check off. They can make certain that there's a lease in place. Um, 
you know, this issue of exclusive, um, I don't know if Mr. Hallman's an attorney, but I, I love listening to different, you know, I mean, on the one hand, I hear what you're saying about exclusive. On the other, I heard what Mr. Foster said, and, and it, anyway, that, that's what courts and juries are for, and we're not that. Um, I do think this is a good balance. Um, so with that being said, um, we'll close um, board discussion, and um, I'm willing to make a motion, or if somebody else feels to. I do want to remind the board it needs to be two separate motions, one for the special exception and one for the variance. Right, so, and, and let me make certain that we're clear. So, what we're going to do now is make a motion on the special exception. And pass or fail, then we'll go to the variance. Well, let me clarify for me. If it passes, we go to the variance. If it fails, do we go to the variance? That's up to you. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Um, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the special exception for 3006 and 3014 Divine Street, case number 2018-0036, special exception. Um, would like to include all the, the to bind this um, motion to all the uh, information that was provided by staff and the staff comments on page one. Um, and two of the packet, um, and I'm going to go through, um, so this is a, uh, this passes, we'd be giving a special exception, give the applicant um, the ability to, to lease 10 off-site parking spaces to, um, to be able to um, then get to the variance. Um, it's my opinion that that by granting this, this special exception does not have a substantial adverse impact on vehicular traffic or pedestrian safety, um, and that the applicant has made provisions um, to alleviate that. I don't, I don't think that's an issue. I don't think it's an issue that, that this use would have a, an adverse impact on adjoining properties in terms of the environmental factors three aesthetics, four that um, there is no um, adverse impact on public safety or create nuisance, nuisance conditions um, or conditions likely to result in increased law enforcement. I think that that's been covered um, by the applicant and provided for in, in um, his testimony and, and the materials that he's provided to us. Um, I don't think that this, this creates a concentration. Again, I think that that's you know, been talked about today, um, but in my mind, it does not create a, a concentration um, or proliferation. Um, I think that this is a good use, um, that this is within the character and, and intent that's in the zoning um, district description. Um, I mean, special exceptions and variances are how um, owners are, are, are given permission to do things. It's, it's, it's also a mechanism to protect the public by making people come for permission to um, do certain things that are um, under the ordinance and then to, to, you know, that might be outside to, to, to protect the public. Um, and then finally, I don't think that the public interest is going to be adversely affected. I, I, I really think that the contrary, that this is a good thing for the Divine Street Corridor and for, for Columbia um, as a whole. Is there a second? I second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, vote aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right, so now we'll move to 2018-0013, uh, a variance, 3006, um, Divine Street. 
and the applicant would please um, come forward and and again I think you know the drill but if you would you know just state Frank what your uh, what the variance is for and then if you would please run through the criteria Give the repetition. But. Same property, same um, request, but for uh, a variance. Um, describe the extraordinary. In the essence of time, you mind if I read the the answers? Do you want me to read the questions as well? Yeah, if if you don't mind, again, okay. if you would go through the the. Um, the describe the extraordinary and exceptional conditions that pertain to the subject property. The subject property is an extremely dense area of Devine Street, so there's limited parking, especially with the parking requirement being um, at eight per thousand, which we believe is high. Describe how the conditions noted above do not generally apply to other property or structures in the vicinity. Other properties uh, do not require as much parking based on their uses, and, and some have access to off-site leased parking. Describe the ways in which the application of the requirements the zoning ordinance effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of the subject property. Uh, the requirements of the zoning ordinance, if upheld, would not, would not allow uh, this use, which we feel is the uh, highest and best use for this property. Describe the ways in which granting of the variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent property or to the public good. Additionally, in that way, in what ways will the granting of the variance not harm the character of the district? Uh, the Divine Street District is, as has been mentioned, uh, a pedestrian friendly area so if people need to park and walk uh, to uh, the build, this building will be of course no different than some of the other properties uh, in the district um, and we believe would add to the uh, to the character of the district and this is this variance request the minimum necessary yes the variance request acknowledges that we will be using uh, all of our on-site parking spaces available so that it is the minimum necessary Explain how your proposal is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance and will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to public welfare. The intent of the zoning ordinance from our perspective is to ensure that um, there is enough parking for each specific use. And with uh, the agreements that we've worked out near our parking lot, we, we do believe that we've provided enough parking for this use. Anyone on the board have any questions of the applicant? Is there anyone in the public that would like to come and speak in favor of or in opposition to this variance? I don't think I'll need it. I'm Bob Hallman. I don't think I'll need it, but I would ask for five minutes for the members on the street that were not able to be here. Um, I misunderstood earlier. I thought we were arguing, when you joined them, I thought we were arguing both of them at the same time in regard to variance and special exception. I would assert that <clears throat> the variance fails on legal grounds. The application fails. Um, it speaks in the code about special um, conditions that this property, this property... If... if, if if you'll pause his time, just just so if, if you can just if, if, if you can. Before I thought it was very clear that he was speaking on behalf of the people here. Mr. Foster, you're not you're not on the mic, and and if you would just wait, and I'll, I'll afford you the same opportunity as Mr. Holman to speak. Um, I think if I'm addressed real quick, I thought as you did that that Mr. Holman, but but I was incorrect in that he is speaking for the members of the community who are not here and I apologize again I wasn't I wasn't clear on that so you may have five minutes yeah, if, I, if I could ask a quick question are, are you a licensed practicing attorney I am a let's see I was licensed in practice for 44 years I have recently retired from the practice gotcha um, you can proceed but um, I'm speaking for Robin Campbell Ted Campbell Courtney Armstrong and other members of our street who have come before, but this is the third time, who could not come. So I am speaking for a group. If you could, again, the, give, give Mr. Holman five minutes, please. The, um, 
I'm speaking to the legal issue of the code requiring that you can grant a variance, but the, the variance has to be based on an unnecessary hardship, and it sets forth four conditions. And the very first one speaks to unnecessary, I mean, or extraordinary conditions pertaining to this particular piece of property. And your form says size, shape, topography, and some of the case law I reviewed had to do with buildings where there was no space on the property, or you couldn't enter it because of the danger of coming out into a roadway. So it had to do with the specific thing having a extraordinary condition. Well, that would fit everybody that didn't have adequate parking. We don't have adequate parking. We have an extraordinary condition. But that's not what the, um, the state Supreme Court has said when it's looked at this. So the, the third of those criteria, the second one speaks to those same conditions which we allege there are no extraordinary conditions. But the third speaks that the extraordinary condition which don't exist, which we say don't exist, prohibit or unreasonably restrict the use of the property. And it doesn't restrict the use of the property. It was an office building. It continued to be an office building where it fits very nicely into the neighborhood. Um, the South Carolina Supreme Court in a number of cases has addressed this idea that just because it's their best use, just because they can make the most money off of it, doesn't mean they get to use the neighborhoods as a parking lot to under, underscore their business. And it, the court has said that the financial situation or pecuniary hardship for a single owner affords no adequate ground for putting forth this extraordinary power, variance, affecting other property owners as well as the public. It must be assumed that any hardship and financial or otherwise resulting from the existing conditions which were contemplated at the time of the purchase. He just admitted that he knew about this at the time of the purchase. And the owner should not be relieved therefrom to the impairment of the rights of others who purchased in reliance on the ordinance and have made large expenditures. That's what we did. We knew we were buying two houses away from Divine Street and we looked into what we thought would be the impingements into our neighborhood. And at the time, there was a house on the corner with a lovely family living there, um, the Kajanos. They have subsequently moved, and um, the gentleman who spoke has a law office there. Works very fine for the neighborhood. The other corner, Lasco has, has bought, and as Mr. Turner indicated, uh, their building has 11 spaces. They already flood our street every day. Some of um, the law office <coughs> uses that street. So it's already a packed neighborhood. But I'm simply speaking to you, and I realize you said that you're not a court, but you are bound within your um, area of discretion to apply the conditions that are here. And I assert to you most respectfully that they have not met those conditions. Thank you. Canson Foster, uh, I'm here as a property owner and on behalf of Backstreet's restaurant, um, and I, I'll be just real brief. Um, I, I do think a variance is appropriate. Um, I don't think that the parking um, is um, going to be a major um, problem for the area, and I, honestly, I don't think you'll notice any increase in parking from um, the parking that was part of uh, the existing business in this restaurant. Um, Primarily because there is so much foot traffic and, um, and Uber traffic. You know, I, I mean, I, speaking for myself and all the friends that I know, anytime we go out and if anybody's going to have a cocktail, they Uber. Uh, it's just it, it's easier, it makes sense, it's safe for the public. And I think that's what a lot of people do. But a, a vast majority of these restaurants um, in this area are fed by the foot traffic of the residents in the neighborhood as well. And, and they're coming literally from their house, uh, either biking or walking uh, to the restaurants. Um, and I think in the um, consideration of this variance, as far as what the public impact is, is that it's important to consider the fact that there are, in fact, 12 public spaces directly across the street. Um, 
the uh, picture here, I, I was looking at it, and I was wondering what time was that picture taken. I think it was taken at 11.15 in the morning, uh, which is uh, right around lunchtime traffic. And the reason I think that is because of the, uh, uh, the shadows on the trees. Um, but that's kind of at the peak time. Those spaces are empty. Those spaces are empty every single day. Um, I, uh, I know that because my conference room looks at those spaces. Uh, they go from my office all the way down there. There are 12 spaces, and they're always empty. So, um, you know, pop parking cannot possibly be that bad uh, in our neighborhood when you have 12 empty public spaces directly across the street from, from the property in question. So I, I, I think that there is really going to be no public impact. Uh, I think the variance would be appropriate. Uh, certainly, I understand um, the, the idea of being able to um, monitor the leases. Uh, but, um, you know, what I can tell you is that from having walked the property, having spent time with the the uh, owners of this restaurant, these folks want to come in and be good, good public neighbors. They want to do the right thing. That's why they are um, um, applying for the variance. That's why they have taken the effort to, to get the parking leases so they can address those issues so they will not become a problem. Um, and I, I think the uh, um, allowance of the variance would, would not impact the public at all. Uh, I think it would not change public uh, tra um, congestion, traffic congestion in the area. And uh, I, I think it would um, just, uh, you know, uh, help a business um, do something that's be very, very good for the neighborhood, and it absolutely will be an improvement to have a nice family-style restaurant in that area versus what's there today. Thank you. Can I ask you a question or two? Sure. When you say that you're here for back streets, do you mean that you're just here in support, or are you here? Are you representing them in any way? I, I do. I, I represent them in, in basically the review of the leases uh, to make sure that they comply with, with um, what, what their intentions are. Uh, but but uh, first and foremost, I'm here as a close property owner uh, who believes that uh, my property will absolutely benefit from a family-style oriented restaurant going in that spot. I, I'm super excited about that. I think it's great for the community. Um, and I ask you all to protect my business interests and my property interests and, and and allow that uh, variance to go through. Mr. Hall, someone in the public made the assertion that, that this variance, that the application doesn't meet certain legal ramifications, and, and you know I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but, but you're an attorney. I, then would, I, I would recommend against asking the public their legal opinion on the matter. Okay. I'd be happy to address the issue in that regard, and that is, is that at the I think I think what I I I I'll withdraw that, and um, I think I'll just go with the, the council of staff. Um, but I thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of or in opposition to this application? Good morning, I'm Michael Drennan. I live in Shandon and I'm also on the Shandon Neighborhood Council. This issue was brought to our attention in our March meeting, uh, but at that time we had insufficient information to make a determination. It wasn't clear how much parking the uh, restaurant was going to have. Since then I've met with city staff, I've met with neighbors, I've walked the property, I've measured it, and I've thought about it extensively. Uh, my personal experience with that area is that there are parking issues there, that there's insufficient parking for the existing establishments in that location of several blocks of Divine Street. Um, I think it's reasonable to hold the restaurant to the requirements, the parking requirements as they are. Um, I've walked that property, I've measured it and paced it out. They might be able to fit 18 spaces in there, but they haven't stipulated where their dumpster is going to go and where that enclosure is. I would imagine after that's done, they're probably down to 17. As far as I know, they're not in compliance with American for Disabilities Act. They may not be subjected to it. It might depend on the extensiveness of the uh, renovation. But again, if at some future date they were required to put in handicap parking, they're going to be down to 16, maybe 15 spots. I believe that, I don't know how many employees you're going to have at peak hours, but I would imagine a lot of that parking would go to the employees. Um, I don't know. After thinking about it, I just feel like it's reasonable to expect an establishment to be able to provide suitable parking, as outlined in the ordinance. If there's an issue with the ordinance, the ordinance are too strenuous, then we need to change the ordinance instead of making an exception to it. But thank you for your consideration. Any questions? Thank you. 
you liked them. My name is Sally Turner, and I live on Capitol Place. And indeed, we do have cars parking on our side of the street daily that, you know, that no one else could park there because of the cars. Uh, the one thing I want to know, though, is speaking to um, the issue of the legal, legal issue. If you all vote for something that turns out to be illegal, then what? Do you all, does something happen to y'all? Or if you vote, if the board votes for something that turns out that your vote, that it was illegal. I think to that's do a question that. that you should probably, if, if you need counsel, you probably ought to ask that, or if you wanted to, but, but I don't feel comfortable in us trying to answer a question that's legal in nature. Oh, I, have you all ever voted for something that then it turned out? Yeah, and I think that if you need counsel, you might want to, to get counsel to, to get an answer to that question. We're, Ma'am, you're we're, welcome to speak to staff after the meeting about any appeal process, if you'd like. Oh, in other words, if they vote for something, then people can appeal the vote? Can appeal your vote? I don't know. Like you say, I don't, I'm not. Aware. There's an appeal period for 30 days after the order is signed. So, but, um, it might be helpful if, if, Rachel, if you could make time for Ms. Turner, if she so chooses to speak with her after the, the hearing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Lynn Phillips, Capitol Place. I just want to speak to you very quickly. It's amazing. Folks keep saying there are 12 parking spaces available in front. Those parking spaces are for the church, the six other restaurants, the businesses, Sadler, the exercise place, Lasco. Those 12 parking spaces are for Cypress across the street, which some of these people are associated with. It's simply uh, lame to say that there are 12 parking places, and you can roll your eyes, but it's lame because those, those parking spa sta spaces are for multiple places, and we live there, and they are very rarely empty, very rarely empty. So I just wanna say that that's not a good argument those 12 spaces, they're not, they're for multiple, multiple businesses, including the church. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, so I'm here, uh, and I want to talk to what I think is kind of the sort of the silent majority. You mind, um, could you state your name? Sure, Brett Warren, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, of people that, that are totally in support of this place being here. You know, it, it's the, exactly the type of restaurant and bar that, that I'd like to see in this community that I think is going to attract economic development that's going to uh, be a good family restaurant for this area. And uh, I just, just wanted to come up and shortly speak and just say there are a lot of people that are, that are very much in support of this place that, you know, just couldn't be here today because they're at work and they're at various other places. But uh, this is the type of place that we need. So thanks. Thank you. I'm Carlisle again. I'd like to um, rebut that comment. It looks like a bar and grill, and uh, if you look at the menu, it looks like bar food. But that's not, that's not the question before us, it's parking. Um, I'd like to reiterate that the uh, uh, 12 spaces in front are on street parking. They're required to have 36 by zoning rules. Um, I don't think y'all are counting. Uh, Apparently the numbers don't mean anything. I'm, I'm confused. Somebody argued that Charleston is popular because it has no parking. Um, I'm not getting that. I'm not getting the question of uh, why, why numbers, why the requirements don't mean much anymore. Um, if, some, if, if the regulations require so many spaces, I understand you can, uh, by fiat, um, uh, reduce it by as many as you want. I think your question is, 
how many do you, how many is allowable and how many will be acceptable? Um, I suggest that uh, uh, what, what they're proposing is too few. Hi, my name's Alice Parrott. I have a business a block and a half down west of this. I am all for restaurants and bars on Divine Street. I think this particular area is so congested. And just as a point of clarification, this photo we're looking at is before Urban Cookhouse is there. It's when that building was a empty building and all the property around it was used for parking for the restaurants that are just directly west of this. So if you're basing your decision on a photograph, it ought to be a current photograph. And I think you should encourage the bar or restaurant to find another location a little further east on Divine Street where parking is not such an issue. I do just want to speak to say that this was just an aerial staff made to represent to show where the parking lots were. That is all. Is there anyone else that would like to um, come forward to speak? <coughs> if that's the case, I'll close testimony. We'll go into board discussion. I think it's similar to our discussion for the previous item. I think we're um, a different question, but similar testimony from, from both sides. I think I agree with Mr. Foster's testimony before us. I think the variance for the parking requirements here is appropriate, and I think they've done a good job of compromising um, various issues that we've been discussing. And a couple of things. I, I, I don't think that um, financial issues should not, and, and I, we don't take that into consideration. I think that that was something raised. Um, I think it is, to echo Mr. Dinkins, um, I don't want to. We don't rule by fiat. You know, variances and special exceptions are the ways that, that property owners can get relief, so to speak. Um, um, I don't think that we rule by, by fiat. Um, you know, again, I, well, I, I, I'm just not going to rehash everything. We've been here for a while. Um, is anyone that would like to make a motion? Make a motion that we approve the variance to the parking requirements for a needing place, 3006 Divine Street, subject to all staff comments. Second. If you don't mind, um, I feel very strongly, Gene, that we, if, if you don't mind just running through the criteria for this variance, um, so that can just be on the record, if um, you don't mind, please. I know we've been through them a couple of times, I guess. Yep. Certainly, describe the extraordinary and exceptional conditions. Um, I think, just in agreement with Mr. Kaysen's statement, the subject property is an extremely dense area, Divine Street, and there's limited parking. Um, we've all discussed there's many different modes of transportation now, and um, we're certainly seeing a lot of requests for um, reductions in parking, and a lot of them have been granted because um, people are finding alternate ways to get to the sites. I, I don't think the conditions generally apply to other properties or structures in the vicinity. Um, you know, certainly it's a unique site. 
describe the ways in which the application of the requirements effectively prohibit or unusually restrict the utilization of the subject property. Um, certainly agree with Mr. Kaysen's statement that the requirements of the zoning ordinance would not enable this particular restaurant to go in there. Um, I don't think it's a detriment to the adjacent property. Um, and he's done a good job of stating that it's the minimum necessary. They're using all the spaces they have on site and then they've gotten 10 adjacent parking spaces to lease, so <coughs> in harmony with an intent with the zoning ordinance for the neighborhood. It's a commercial district and they've got a lot of restaurants and shops and I think it's a good fit. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. The next item on the regular agenda, so it is item number nine, case 2018-0028. It's a special exception for 3126 Two Notch Road. This is a special exception to establish an automotive service use. If the applicant's here, he's welcome to come forward and discuss his case. Um, I'd like to make a quick motion that we um, have a five minute break just to make sure everybody can it needs to use the restroom or anything like that. We've been sitting here for a long time. So. Second. second, okay. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Pat. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we restart the May 8, 2018 uh, Columbia Zoning Board of Appeals hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. All right, so again, um, we have case 2018-0028 special exception to establish an automotive service use the applicant is invited to come forward good morning I'm Anthony Hunter and uh, came to speak on behalf of the um, developer for this project uh, if you're familiar with the uh, can I get you to a little bit closer to the microphone so that people can hear you Thank yes you. sir um, Anthony Hunter this project is a building that's been existing in Columbia and it operated as an adult entertainment facility for years and the owners now are hoping to maybe bring something a little bit more desirable to the community as well as making it a service um, business for the community as well. They've elected, in this case, we're gonna do the uh, automotive first. They've elected to go with a tire change and repair facility. And the uh, automotive actually is the um, category that it actually fits best under this uh, zoning request or variance in this case. What we like to do, we know that we've looked at the um, facility for a number of things. In this case, the uh, parking on the facility is sufficient for the in and out traffic that the um, tire repair <coughs> business um, be more than adequate for, you know, in and out, changing tire, repairing a tire, that sort of thing. We're at a point where we can either drive an automobile into a covered building or bring the um, lifts out and change or repair a tire on a car. Um, The, um, I'm just considering if there are any other things that would be, it's not going to be a situation where it's going to act, affect any negative way, any traffic. We got three curb cuts in the one strip, strip mall area. Um, any other exceptions would be basically there may be some sales of tire primarily repair 
and changing of tires and maybe balancing a machine inside. Sir, do you have your um, uh, application with the uh, criteria for the uh, special exception? Yes. Would you like me to Would you mind go going through those for us, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, Ms. Would Ellen. you mind going through those? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, describes the way it proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on traffic flow. And that's basically that we do have a sufficient amount of parking there. We can park up near the building as well as along an area that will be adjacent to the curb. There is sufficient parking to handle our traffic waiting as well as those cars are being serviced. Describe in what ways what proposed exception will have substantial adverse impact on adjoining property. The way this building is, is configured, the owner has actually three out of the four adjoining, almost like a mini or strip mall. There are actually three compartments to it, and the owners actually own three of the four. So there'll be no adverse effect on the existing, what used to be a restaurant, which strangely, an empty building caught fire here a couple months ago. So the owner has passed and his widow has moved out of state. She has that one unit for sale. We're not interested in it. So I'm almost sufficient. I'm going to say that it's going to be some time before anybody's going to show any interest in it. The upfit cost is going to be tremendous based upon what has happened in the electrical services primarily, all the electrical and the copper in the building was being taken out is what actually caused, I think, the fire when we look at it. Um, I got a question. So, is this a, a like a condominium? No, sir. It's just like a little strip mall. Um, it's almost if you can look at the um, if you're familiar with the Auto Zone. Yep. On, like they got the restaurant and they have the Auto Zone. In this one, we there was a restaurant, there was a nightclub, and I guess an an adult entertainment part of that strip. We want to take the um, restaurant and nightclub to make it a tire repair company. Or You're going to gut that completely and then start over. There's some, there's some drawings in here that show some storefronts and um, so on and so forth, but it, it looks like it's the existing plans of the existing restaurant, maybe? <laughs> the uh, restaurant is, is the uh, one at 3122. And we're not involved in that at all. We're not here to talk about that one. We're interested in the 30, the other two buildings that are there. And that's... Um, Is that 30, uh, so that's 3126 and 3132? 3126 and 3132. <clears throat> Automotive is 3126 and that's the one we're addressing now. It's gonna be the center section of the uh, complex. And it's showing um, uh, the storefronts. Are those like existing right now? It looks like that's a planned renovation. Is there any planned renovation to the outside at all, or is that Basically, just Basically, it's just been renovated. All new glass, storefront, new stucco. The only so, thing that so these have, are these are as is as as as, as, as constructed. That's correct. Okay, that's what I wanted to make sure. Uh, basically, in the um, use facility, primarily, it's the building that's there now has been just stripped, and basically, we don't need anything other than maybe a tire changing machine inside that building, <clears throat> if the owners desire to put up a roll-up door so cars or trucks could come in. You know, they have sufficient width, height, and that sort of thing to do that. And the floor is a slab on grade, so it will be sufficient for that particular use. It says, describe in what ways a special exception will not have substantial adverse impact on the aesthetics of the characteristics of the building and others. They're basically configured pretty much along the same way, all storefront. 
I think there's some tinted glass, and at one point there was an, an awning that went through the entire thing, and I think with weather conditions and all that affected that. So right now we're looking at a storefront, aluminum storefront and glass facility. Describe the ways in which the proposed exception have adverse impact on the public safety. In this case, I just don't see any adverse use because we got three curve cuts. You can come in the left, right, or the center portion of the building. There's a traffic light right at the third entrance or egress uh, curve cut there. And let's see, explain how the establishment of the exception does not create a consecration, concentration a proliferation of the same. Well, I think we got adequate in and out in an event that traffic was coming in. You still got two other cuts that would allow traffic to leave. So I don't see a congestion of traffic flowing in and out of this parking lot at all. Explain how the proposed exception is constitute the character and intent of the underlying direct, directed as indicated in the zoning. And there's no tire service in the area. There's no real other, it's not as if we're flooding the area with um, this kind of business. Um, the owners have looked at other things to go in there and didn't realize that this is one that required a special <coughs> exception. So that's why I'm here asking on their behalf today. Describe how the special exception is appropriate in this locale. And I think it's because it's, it's a service that can actually serve the community and make it, um, you know, without going back through some other type business that would draw in a lot of people, draw in a lot of, you know, if you needed a tire repair, you pull in, Nine times out of 10, you're in and out 15 to 30 minutes, even if there were a two or three car wait. Explain the ways the proposed special exception will not adversely affect the public's interest. These services will not, I think, bring an adverse service to the community. I think that for the most part, it would be something welcome. And this is something that the uh, owners prefer to do. They just feel like there's a, suffi a sufficient um, need for the business in the area. And they do have sufficient experience in different locales and different states in doing this kind of business. So with that, unless you have some que questions, I really don't have anything to add or there's no other sales of any kind other than cars, balancing tires, changing them out, repairing, and maybe just buying and selling of old or new tires. Any, uh, any questions from the board? Thank you very much. Um, welcome. We'll hear testimony. Is anybody else here in speaking in um, favor or against this application? <coughs> Diane Wiley, and uh, I'm at 4036 Webb Court, president of Belvedere. First of all, he, he's not the owner. He's working for the owner. Second of all, it's four, four tire places on Two Notch Road within four blocks of Two Notch Road. We got two on Beltline. We don't need any more tire changing places there. We got three places right on the corner of Wendover and Two Notch Road where he's talking about. This is a picture of the place that he's talking about. It's the old Mr. B's. And second of all, uh, when these people come in, they need to come and ask us what we need. We are homeowners. We don't want Two Notch Road to look like Decker, infested with so much with the tire places. It's a lot on Two Notch Road. 
One just, just opened up two weeks ago. So we got plenty of changing tires and uh, balance and whatever you, you call it. And we got three, three places right on that corner that do the same thing. So we don't need any more. We was here last week, last month, and he wasn't here, and y'all deferred it. And, uh, and we had a lot of people last week. People have to work and they have to, they can't get off their jobs 10 o'clock. We're trying to get positive things in our neighborhood, restaurants, hotels. That's what we need. Business, nice business. We got enough. We got enough. That's all I have to say. If you want to ask me any questions, I'm here to ask, answer. Any questions? <clears throat> Thank you for your testimony. A uh, question for staff. So uh, as far as we know, all of the uh, zoning, the parking requirements and all that are okay for this, for this use? Parking is, yes. Is uh, the applicant, could you come back to this stadium very quickly? And I just wanted to, get, are, you the, are you the business owner or the property owner or? No, sir, and I, I don't think I represented myself to be that way and had no intention. I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to figure that out for myself so I can know. So you're, do you, I mean, are you representing the, the property owner or the yes, business sir. owner? In this case, I'm actually representing the property owner. Uh -huh. Who is the tire store? What is it, who is it, is the tire store franchise? Is it local? No, no. sir, it's, it's all local. It's not Local. a franchise type okay. business. Yes, sir. The owner of the real estate will also own the tire company. Is that what you're saying? The owners of the property, yes, sir, would be the owners of the tire store. So the company. Yes, sir. They would be the, the owners, operators. No. Not in the Columbia area. I know that they have in Detroit. In fact, I met with them this weekend, and they had a couple of the other operators or owners talking about doing it there. And not only that, they have, um, they do have another facility in the Columbia area that if this one, for whatever reason. What's the name of that facility, and where is it they, located? They haven't opened it yet. They're going to uh, do the design, and it's maybe eight miles away from this particular building. Mm -hmm. And what they've been trying to do is just find something that goes in this area without bringing back the old business. I'm not sure that the old nightclub would not work. I know that it would be met with substantial resistance. So it was my thought that, look, change to something that's more desirable, mm -hmm. more community friendly. And they have listened to that. However, they're sitting on this building a year or so, almost two years, with no revenue. And so at some point, you're paying taxes, you're paying insurance. Something has to give. So, you know, I. I could semi, you know, agree with them that this tire operation and services would certainly be a change and a much better change from what the neighborhood was used to. Because when you got more than one in opinion, you know, saying, well, if it were a nightclub, and that's how it first starts. It starts as nightclub, and before you know it, 
is back to what it was before because that's exactly what it was on for before. Could you, could you list exactly what the services are that will be provided in this store? Right Baseball. now we're mm -hmm. talking about tire changing, balancing, selling of new and used tires, and of course they would be offering a warranty for new tires. So no other service work, they're not doing and any car way, repairs or anything like that? No, sir, we're not thinking about oil changes and anything that would cause an environmental uh, pollutant, anything like that. This is tire operations is what the request for. And they are um, okay with um, no outside storage or display at all, correct? They don't have a uh, uh, need for that. They got some storage behind the facility. It used to be a um, outside dining facility. Mm, that covered area behind the uh, yes, shop? Yes, sir. What's the plan for that? Sir? What, what are you planning on doing with that? I'm saying if they needed storage facility, they, they had it in the back of the building. They certainly wouldn't need to bring anything like that out front. This is not one of those situations where they have to roll out 100 tires in the morning and say, this is a tire shop. I would imagine later they'll come back with a request for a sign, and we'll put that up in accordance with the regulation for signage. So you feel like they'd be comfortable if they had a stipulation that there would be no outside storage or display of tires? They, we've discussed that, and I think it's okay with them. They would have no problem with that. I have to agree with you. It certainly is a lot better use than a, a nightclub. That's your opinion and mine. Is there a motion from the um, the um, <coughs> um, I think I'd like to make a motion that we approve this um, request for a special exception with the stipulation uh, based on the, the the testimony that we've heard today and the written testimony, and and, and it would be stipulated on. Um, the fact that there would be no outdoor display or storage of tires of any kind. Mr. Chairman, could I ask you to make sure I understand that we're talking about no outside, meaning no front area storage or display? No, I'm talking about outside. If it's, if it's stored, tires are stored in the back, they have to be stored in a covered, covered yes. screened area. Yeah. Where, that area would have to be screened yeah. as well. Um, in the back, but absolutely no um, tires on the road, no tires in the parking lot in the front, no display tires, um, anything like that. Well, there used to be the name of the old business there, and uh, I'm not sure during the last renovation where we actually took the glass out, redid that, and then restuck over the front, whether that name didn't disappear. Any signage for a business that isn't existing anymore would need to be removed, and then they would have to comply with the right. ordinance. For any new signage, they would have to receive permits. Right. That is understood. Uh, I think that my motion stands. There's a, there's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item number 10. That's case 2018-0029, special exception at 3132 Two Notch to establish a convenience store. I do have to put on the record that no good neighbor plan was submitted to staff. Hmm. Okay. Mr. Chairman, based upon the last statement, 
I'd like to withdraw this application at this time until we have the opportunity to do our due diligence as it relates to those plans and maybe try to come up with some meeting of the minds with the community. And in fact, they might even change what they want to do it for. So I'm going to talk with the owners and express that maybe this is the best thing to do at this point. Mr. Raw, is that okay? Okay, so um, you'll speak with the owner and then y'all will do a, a reapplication. And yes, sir. Okay. We don't need a motion on that, do we, Wayne? If you accept no. it. That's fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. All right, the next item on the agenda is item number 11 on new business. It's case 2018-0031, special exception at 6401 Easter Street, a special exception to establish a residential care facility. If the applicants are here, they are welcome to come forward. Angela, yes, ma'am. Could you um, get just a little closer to the microphone so we can hear you? Okay. Good morning. My name is Angela Staples, and um, I thank y'all for giving me the opportunity to explain why I would like to um, use the property. A little in, in all of Could you speak a little louder? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a little nervous. Okay. Um, I'm here to ask y'all to give me the opportunity, me and Mr. Dudley, to use the property at 6401 Easter Street for a home for a vet, for homeless veterans. It's, it would be like a temporary housing um, to help assist them to get them off the street. Okay, thank you. It's to get them off the street. Um, I came involved with the veterans back in the early part of 2000 when I was doing my work study. And um, I was assigned to um, the old Salvation Army when it was located downtown. At first, I was a little nervous because I've never worked with people that was homeless. And when I got there, my heart just wept when I saw that these men that had fought for our country um, were living on the street. Um, they had mental illness. Um, why I'm here today is to ask y'all to give us a special exemption to be able to not house them permanently, but I want to open that home up to temporarily to give them housing, to help them find a, place, a stable place to live, to also direct them to um, agencies that can assist them with if they have mental illness or any issues that they have. There are rules that we have, um, I'm sorry to bring any with me, but we will be doing background checks. There will be a drug test done monthly. Um, we're not looking to house them no longer than six months because within six months, they should be able to find permanent housing. Uh, hi, my name is Dudley Noel. Okay, I'm the owner of 6401 Easter Street. Okay, and we're here to ask for this special exemption no, okay, it's a thing that, uh, okay, we had purchased this property with the intention of turning it into a home for uh, homeless veterans, you know, okay, and that's what we'd like to use it for. You know, uh, as Ms. Staples had stated, you know, okay, we'll be doing background checks on the people that we'll be bringing in. Okay, uh, when I had originally went in front of Miss Bailey, okay, she had told me that there were some concerns and she gave me the names of two people that expressed concerns. Okay, I reached out to these people three times each, okay, and none of them ever responded, you know, okay, so. Uh, if there were concerns from the area, you know, I don't know why they didn't respond at that particular time, you know. Okay, but we're here in front of the city council to ask for this special exemption. And I thank you. Yes, ma'am. Are you familiar with the uh, criteria for the special exception that you filled out um, when you made the application? Well, Mr. Dudley had filled it out. So did you? Was I familiar Did you, with that? Who, who filled out the application for the special exception? 
Uh, well, Miss Bailey assisted me in filling out the application. I'm sorry, I can't understand you, sir. Could you? Miss Bailey assisted me in filling out the application. Okay. So, um, can you the, the the criteria? Can you go through those for us and explain why this meets those criteria? Do what? That you have, he can't hardly hear that well. Go through the criteria that you have filled out. The criteria? Mm -hmm. If you go to the next page, it's this right here. <clears throat> yeah, those questions that you filled out on the application. Okay, which particular question? So let's start with number one. Okay. Describe in what ways the proposed special exception will ha not have a substantial adverse impact on vehicular traffic or vehicular and pedestrian safety and how adequate provisions are made in the proposed exception for parking and for loading and unloading. Okay, well, we have a driveway at the house, okay, so it's a thing that uh, we'll be using the driveway for loading or unloading and we will not disrupt any of the traffic in the area, okay, and We'll only be allowing one car. How are you going to transport? How do the how are the, the the would the residents be transported uh, to and from the place? Is that y'all got that figured out? Well, we have public transportation available in the area. You. Okay, and then the second one is describe in what ways proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on adjoining properties in terms of environmental factors and lights, noise, glare, vibration, fumes of air or light and or litter. Okay, we well, would we'll not be changing anything on the outside, okay? All of the activities will be conducted inside the home. Okay, it's a six bedroom home, okay? So we have more than ample space inside. <clears throat> okay. Describe in what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on the aesthetic character of the area to include a review of the orientation and spacing of buildings. Okay, uh, well, we didn't, we're going to use the property to house homeless veterans, okay? I mean, these are people that have fought for our country, okay, that have experienced hard times. Or, and for one reason or another, have not been able to find housing. Okay, so we'd like to assist them in that area. Okay. Number four, describe the ways in which the proposed special exception will not have an adverse impact on public safety or create nuisance conditions detrimental to the public interest or conditions likely to result in increased law enforcement response. Okay, well, it's the thing that, uh, a staff member will be on the property, okay, uh, all right. <clears throat> Currently, her brother is staying there, you know, okay, and he'll be renting one of the rooms, okay, and, uh, okay, I'm retired, okay, and I live maybe about 10 or 15 minutes away, so, you know, it's a thing that I'll be going over there on a daily basis. So, um, a staff member, uh, that just, uh, are you, who's, run, who's running this facility? It's going to be Mr. Um, Newell and I. We'll be there Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. So, someone stand there currently? Yes, he's okay. protecting the property while, until we get it filled. It's my brother. I can't hear you, ma'am. Could you? He's standing there to protect, protect the property, property until we get it filled. Um, and y'all, y'all have experience in doing this, a residential yes, care facility. Right now, I work in a community-based home. I work with adults that are high function, mm -hmm. and so pretty much I know what to do. Gotcha. Yeah, I know how to assist them. Okay. And and is this is this is a five hundred one c three, or is this just the two of you guys just getting together out of the goodness of your hearts, or what's the how how is this working? <laughs> It's just my dream. It's just, um, I've been a caregiver for 34 years. I pretty much have um, taken care of people with dementia and Alzheimer's. 
And when I went back to school to become a social worker, and like I said, when I ended up at the Salvation Army, I saw that it was a great need. I saw men and women that had fought for our country that were lying on the street. And if you can recall back here about 20 years ago when homeless really started hitting Columbia and they were lying downtown on the streets and panhandling, I was a part of helping a lot of them get off, that, off the street and to find permanent housing. I just want to be able to help them, you know, because they they put their life on the line for us. Now we need to do something for them. Because if you look now, they're coming back now from this war and they're coming back find, having no place to live. And I think we need to do our part. Just like they put their life on the line for us, we need to fight for them as well. Um, number five, explain how the establishment of the proposed best exception does not create a concentration or proliferation of the same similar types of special exception use, which con con Concentration may be detrimental to the development of the uh, redevelopment of the area in which the special exception use is proposed to be developed. Okay, uh, well, uh, no, will not. Okay, there are no other such facilities in the area. Okay, so we don't feel that it'd be a, a problem of overcrowding the area. Is that a statement that you made um, after researching? the where where there might be other facilities in the area or not or is that just a statement that you noticed is, is it no well we you know we went around the area okay uh we spoke to you know That's both the, the neighbors on both sides you know okay and they told us that there was no such facility in the area you know So when you I say area, what do you mean by that? that? We're gonna, I'm gonna do, make, make sure that we're putting the right people, trust me. I'm gonna do extensive background checks. There will be um, monthly drug testing as well, um, as long as they're living there. And I'm looking at housing them no more than six months because I figure after six months you should be able to, I should be able to find somewhere for them to go. And then you'd be uh, welcoming Another group of uh, yes, okay. yes. So it's not where it's going to be permanent housing. I want to help those who want to be helped, and I, I also want to say, um, uh, Mr. Wilson had came out on May the third. Um, Mr. Dudley and I wasn't there, um, and it, it was told that someone from the community, he came out because people from the community had stated that we had the house filled with people. And so he needed to come inside and see. Well, that wasn't true. And I feel that Mr. Wilson should have contacted uh, Mr. Dudley and I. And I would have been more than happy to um, let him come through and walk through the house to see that there wasn't anybody there. And then also explain to him too what I was trying to do. You know, what I want to do for um, the homeless veterans. And I can understand the concern, you know, of bringing people into the neighborhood because a lot of them have been there for years. I understand that, but I assure you, I will do my best to make sure I put the right people into that home because I already have rules already set. It's just a one strike. I'm not giving three strikes, I'm giving them one strike. And once they fail, if no alcohol will be allowed there, no drug use, no overnight guests, you can have someone, if you, you know, it's gonna be a house for men, they can have a female visit, but there's no overnight guests. There's no lottery on the front. You have to smoke on the back if you smoke cigarettes. So I have a lot of rules and I wish I would have bought that with me this morning. To show y'all that um, we're doing everything we can to make that neighborhood safe. Um, finally, the the. Um uh, the last two, uh, explain how the proposed zoning exception is consistent with the character and intent of the underlying district as indicated in the zoning district description with any applicable zoning overlay district goals or requirements. 
Okay, well, this is a residential area, and we intend to use it for residential purposes. Okay, so we don't feel that we're, you know, in opposition to that. You know? I think it's single-family residential. Is it right? It is general residential. General residential, okay. Uh, seven, describe how the proposed special exception is appropriate for its location and compatible with the permitted uses adjacent to and in the vicinity of the property. Correction, I'll note it is single family. I misspoke. I'm sorry, say that again, Rachel. It is single family. Single I family misspoke. residential, okay. So getting back to that last statement, you do understand there's a difference in single family residential is intended for that house to be used as a single family, not as a boarding house, this correct? Right? For a boarding house, correct. But residential cares are permitted by special exception in these districts. Right. I do just want to make that clear. Yeah, we got that. That's why they're here today, right? <laughs> um, zone number seven. Describe how the proposed special exception is appropriate for its location and compatible with the permitted uses adjacent to it and in the vicinity of the property. Okay, well, we feel that this area is underserved, okay, in terms of, you know, being able to provide home, homeless veterans, you know, with housing. Okay, so, you know, is, that is the, Do you, you think that they'll be coming from this particular area, the homeless veterans that y'all will be housing? I have made contact with the VA. The um, what now? Uh, we have made contact with the VA to provide, you know, the, the okay. pro pro uh, sorry, I get tongue twisted, to um, provide housing for them. So you have a contract with the VA, is that right? No, we had spoken with someone, one of the social workers, and she, once we uh, get the okay from here, then she's going to help me provide uh, a place for them. Okay. I was just saying the statement that the area is underserved, um, it's actually the veterans, we don't know where they're coming from, right? No, no we don't know where they originally came from. No. Okay. Um, number eight, explain in what ways the proposed special exception will not adversely affect the public interest. Okay, well, we, our intentions are to take people off the streets, you know, which in turn will help the community would definitely serve a community need, okay, because homelessness is, you know, running rampant, you know, okay, people need places to live. If you look at downtown Columbia now, you don't see it, but back in the early part of 2000, they were lying all over the place. They were panhandling, and like I say, I was a part of that. I was a part of getting a lot of them off the street and finding permanent housing for them. Very good. Is there any other questions from the board? A couple of quick questions. Well, first, I would like to just commend you on your um, your idea and your attempt here. I think it's um, very well intentioned, and I think you should be applauded for that. But I do have a couple of questions. I guess one concern I have is what do you know? I'm looking at your I'm looking at the overhead shot of the house situated in the middle of the lot. It looks like a fairly large size house for the lot. What, what, what are these people, the homeless veterans, what would they do during the daytime? What do, what do, help explain to us what, what they would do. In the daytime, while I'm there, I'll be helping them um, with any assistance that they need. We're basically going to start working on housing. And those who need the, um, any mental health, I will be contacting mental health, setting up appointments for them to go there. Um, I'm also looking into finding agencies that assist us with um, vouchers for um, transportation. For those who doesn't have a car, they can take the bus. But I'll pretty much be there every day helping them with the needs and getting them the information and directing them to the right agency that will assist them. So it's not like they're going to be lying around. They're going to be, you know, doing stuff, and they're going to also be a part in keeping the property up. Is, is there any sort of fence around the backyard of this property? Yes, it's fenced in, except the front part is where they're going to drive in, and that's where they're going to park, because we're planning on paving the side where they'll have access to park if they have their own um, transportation. 
So they won't be parking on the street at all, so we won't be blocking anything. The back of the house has a terrace that's fenced mm -hmm. in, okay, and then it also has an extensive backyard. I think one concern that, that I would have about this is what happens during the daytime if, um, I, I guess my main concern is, is some of these homeless veterans not having anything to do really during the daytime and sort of wandering around and infiltrating into the neighborhood. Um, I think that's a concern well, that I have. Like I say, I will be there and um I'm looking at now, not a certain kind of homeless veteran. I'm not going to be looking at the ones who's going to be roaming the street. Because mm -hmm. like I said, we're going to interview them. And I'm going to see where their mindset is. So I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I'm quite sure uh, the ones I'm looking at taking in won't be the ones roaming the street. It's the ones who are going to be, be interested in me helping them get into the next level in their life. Basically, we're interested in people that are interested in yeah. trying to better their situation, yes. you know, yes. okay. You know, people that would be willing to take the information that we're going to give them and utilize it, you know, okay. If we can direct them to housing, mm -hmm. you know, okay, we would expect them to take advantage of that, you know. If they need mental health, you know, okay, they would be able to take advantage of the mental health facility. No. Okay, whatever area that they may need assistance in, we'll be there to try and provide it. Okay, well, the house has six bedrooms, okay? We have one bedroom that we intend to use as an office space, okay? So there are five other bedrooms available. Right, the maximum number would be five. Yeah. Yes, that's where my brother will come in at. He would be the nice staff there. Well, we're going to rent out four. He'll take the other one. He'll no, take well, he had currently yeah. has one of the bedrooms. So, okay, there would only so be, it'll be four, four bedrooms. Available. Yes. Right. I've got, what I've got a great concern about is, is being able to effectively help people, you need a business plan, you, you need to have, um, you know, partnerships with different people, you need to have the ability to refer if someone's got an issue to refer them to other, to other agencies, and I think that, that it's just, I'm not saying that I necessarily have a problem per se with with this use in this location, but without a business plan, it's just hard to, to pin down what you're trying to do. Well, I have a business, it's not quite finished yet, but I have started working on some of the things that um, we will be doing. Um, well, maybe, I, and I'm just suggesting this, but, but it might be that you're just a little premature in making this application and, you know, uh, it's, it's it makes it easier for me. I won't speak for the other board members, but but to to, to grant something like this, we need a lot of um, specificity. We need. Well, could I come back with a business plan? Well, I I, I think that if you were going to um, withdraw your application, I mean that 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 would be up to you um, or defer. Um, but I just. You know, I, I don't want to cut anybody short, and I don't want to, and, and I'm not saying, let me be clear. I mean, a business plan is not, you know, an automatic, you come back with a business plan next month or at some point in the future, that's not an automatic um, 
it would help in making a decision, but I don't want you to leave thinking that that if you come back with a business plan, that that's the only thing required to get to something affirmative with this with this with this application. You know, whether you withdraw it or not, is is or defer it is is up to you. But um, I just know, and again, I can only speak for myself, but but um, I can't vote for something affirmative today just based on what I've got. Okay. Again, I'm not saying that I could vote for it in the future necessarily. I'm not saying that I couldn't, but 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 today I can, you know, unless someone else speaks up in board discussion after the public, but but my thought would be to make a motion to deny this. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, um, and again, I want to make sure that, that everybody's got a chance to, to, to speak, but, but I think that's, anyway, repeat myself again I think you know whether you defer or withdraw is up to you okay well um, we're willing to withdraw the application okay and we'll come back with the business plan we'll come back with the house rules that we've set up you know okay because yeah, I just see I see now we didn't come prepared be able to feel more comfortable. Well, and I also think that it's, it's critical but there's no requirement that that you meet with those people who are affected by it. And I think if you, you know, as you turn around, you'll see that there's a lot of people, yeah. I don't know if they're here in support of or opposition to, but my assumption would be is that they've, they're not clear about what you're trying to do. And I, again, said this earlier in another case, I, I applaud people who fight for their neighborhoods and I would just encourage you, but it's not required that you go and talk with those people who, who no, well, you know, I attempted to reach out to them. I, I, I can't get into all that, but again, I, I just think that, 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 that it's a good idea to do that. Um, okay. um, I, I understand the procedure. what you're saying, okay, but, you know, yeah. when Ms. Yeah. Bailey gave me the information, I attempted three times to contact each one of them. Well, I don't want to do a head count, but I can assure you when Looks you walk like out of here, plenty of people you're going to probably have now. about 50 people that would love to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. No, well, there seem to be a lot of people here in opposition, you know, okay, but... but that's uh, what I'm... Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you friendly advice whether, whether you choose to, to act on it or not, but, but it just seems like that... that when we have these types of applications and you have neighbors that, that come out, I think a lot of times it's because there's not enough information out there for people to make up their minds. Um, and I hear you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not debating it, I'm, I'm not gonna debate it if you tried to contact people, but I will assure you when you walk out this door, I bet you there are a lot of people that would love to meet with you. If not now, they'll set up a time. But again, that's not a requirement for you to come back. You know, we're, we're, we're willing to withdraw the application and come back with the business plan, the house rules. Okay. Uh, again, I'll tr attempt to contact, you know, uh, the people that are in opposition. Okay. Uh, I'm willing to give my name and my number to anyone that's in opposition. Okay. They can contact me, you know, and, you know, they can see what our intentions are. Okay. I mean, I don't know what else I can do in order to contact them, you know. Okay, well, um, I'm not, um, what's the procedure? It's just uh, you know, at, at this point in the game, I just don't know whether it can be withdrawn or whether we have to, to actually vote to allow them to defer it. I mean, that's what I'm suggesting. They can withdraw until a motion's made. Until a motion's made? Okay. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to... Uh, say, but I'm, my understanding is that y'all have withdrawn this request. Is that correct? Yeah, we're willing to withdraw for now. Okay. Well, a motion has not no. been made, and the applicant has yes. indicated that they wish to withdraw the application. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You no, know, 
know, hopefully we'll be able to make the next meeting of the council. Um, well. That deadline is tomorrow, but you can, we'll talk after the meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, just so that um, the board, I know that there's a lot of people here that have taken their time out um, today, and I know that you're here um, with concerns, and we've read the correspondence uh, as well and understand that. Um, and um, I just wanted to, um, you know, uh, if, if there's one or two spokesmen that would like to be able to talk right now, just before we adjourn, I'd be glad to let you come up and, and just so that you're here and I hate to waste people's time like that if you don't mind. thank you all very much okay. and, and that way you can at least um, you know express your what your concerns are yes ma'am first of all uh, my name is Charmaine Pope Clowney yes, and uh, my mother and I she's 90 years old she's here today she's a retired school teacher she's been living in the neighborhood for 54 years yes, uh, and for uh, Thank you so much for uh, your, your questions and for encouraging uh, this person to withdraw because um, it's obvious to me that they did not clearly demonstrate or present any evidence at all that this special exception should be granted. But more importantly, I'm here uh, if in fact this uh, is reinstated for a later time to say that uh, most of us here in the Greenview community are opposed to granting a special exception as a variance because number one, the quality of life for, as you can see, mostly elderly uh, African-American Greenview residents would be adversely impacted by having a residential care facility, although for veterans, very good idea, but not, not good at all, near to A.J. Lewis School, two blocks away. Uh, it would increase public nuisance, safety problems, likelihood for additional noise, um, cause additional parking, uh, a, a good business plan, if, if that could be drawn up, I, I, I think that if they could show that, but I really don't think they can show that. Potential for a crime, and as much as I love veterans, they fought for our country, I have <laughs> relatives who are veterans, but uh, the research, and I can provide that to you, indicate that many veterans have problems with um, crime, drugs, and all of that. And being so closely to a daycare center, uh, we have Reed Daycare Center three blocks away. Um, it, it, it just really pains me. Um, also, there are two similar residential care facilities located within a two-mile radius of this one. And it's on Dobie Street and Cindy Drive. This was given to me by a lady who had to go back to work. Um, and also, one thing that research indicates that in zip code 29203, which is inhabited by mostly African Americans, um, it, 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 there are just too many. It's just saturated. And I'm wondering why that is and if there is a racially discriminatory intent against this. And there have been attorneys, atta attorneys uh, contacted uh, on this, and, and um, we're wondering if in the, <laughs> the vein of um, uh, Ms. Majeska Simpkins and Matthew Perry, we should file a lawsuit against the City of Columbia. But at any rate, um, for reasons I'll grab my time up, no, you got just a little uh, bit more. I just, I just have a couple of more things. I, I really appreciate all the work you do, all the questions that you've asked. Um, but this property owner didn't even meet with us, didn't provide a business plan. We haven't seen demonstration of liability insurance, criminal background check forms. His background um, is in question. Uh, I had my assistant, I used to be, I'm an old retired Southern lawyer. Uh, and they, they came back to live with my mama, but my assistant pulled this off the um, internet, whether it's true or false or whatever, it's public record, there are at least eight tax liens against Mr. Nelson. He can rebut that, but I have these are tax warrants in, in, for the state of New York and federal, and I'm gonna introduce this into evidence. Um, we don't really, uh, that, that shows also if this person has tax liens, then how are they going to successfully run a facility even if they have a property manager. But again, we've lived here all of our lives. These people have worked when they could not live in white neighborhoods. And our neighborhood is just saturated with these kinds of facilities. 
And please, for the sake of our kids, for the sake of our elderly residents, and I'm one of those, I'm chronologically gifted now, I'm over uh, a certain age, um, please, please, please do not change the quality of our, uh, our neighborhood. Our, our people have worked really, really hard to maintain your, their property values, which might be impacted, and um, I really appreciate it. We appreciate all you do, and thank you so much. Thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Pope, thank you very much. I think you very eloquently stated the concerns of your community. I appreciate that. Okay, that matter has been withdrawn. Um, I guess we'll go to the next one. We have one last case on the agenda. So it is the case that was removed from the consent agenda. It is item number three, case 2018-0032. Oh. It is a special exception at 902 Hardin and 926 Hardin. It's a special exception to lease remote parking. And if the applicant's here, they can come forward. Uh, chairman. Chairman, I, I need to recuse my, I mean, I need to. I have, I have a I think we got a quote. We'll pause a minute until things quiet down a little bit. I think we can proceed if you'd like to state your name. Sure. Anthony Carboni. Um, disappointing. I thought they were all here to support my Could you get just a little closer office. to the microphone, Anthony? Sure. Um, so my name is Anthony Carboni. Uh, I've been a business owner in Columbia, Five Points Vista, for over 10 years. Um, a lot of fitness things. I either directly own or have business partners who own Torch Bar, Forest Drive CrossFit, Bikram Yoga Columbia, Orange Theory Fitness. Um, we do a lot to positively impact our community. We work closely with Heroes in Blue, Hepworth Children's Home, Cure for ALS, Campmates for Kids, so that's just a little bit about uh, me. Forest Drive CrossFit opened two years ago um, on Forest Drive, the, the, the namesake. Uh, it's a pretty small building we have now. It's only about 1,700 square feet. Uh, it's not big enough for what we want to do. Sometimes we're even forced to go outside to do some things that we would rather do inside. Um, tying this in, I actually used to hold the lease at the space in question, 902 Hardin Street. Um, I'm guessing it was seven or eight years ago, several years ago. Um, I also own a, a company called Carolina Mattress, and I originally signed that lease with the intent of operating Carolina Mattress there. The first day that I was there, we backed a truck, a semi that was unloading, and uh, a gentleman who I believe was the property owner um, came out and said, whoa, you, you don't have the rights to be back here. You know, this is, you can't do this. And so I immediately went back to the broker, and sure enough, the gentleman was correct. Um, we had no right to anything outside of our building. So in light of that, I wound up separating myself from that situation. Uh, my old business partner was there until uh, last month, and unfortunately, he went out of business. And I don't have much contact with him, but um, apparently, I, I think these people would agree that he didn't do the best job of making sure he didn't affect the people around him. So coming full circle, the gentleman that holds the lease at that space now, he has a lot of um, very high traffic retail properties, um, smartphone medic type places, repairing iPhones, watches, uh, stationery, just all kinds of things that will bring in lots of traffic. Um, and so now that he's been forced to take over, that's the business that he would have to put in there. That's what he knows. But there's a very real parking problem there. Um, we would be grandfathered in under any kind of retail uh, mercantile uh, business that went in there. But that would very adversely affect these guys, the businesses around them. 
So he called me and asked if I had any ideas, and, and I said, well, actually, yeah, but, you know, our gym, we could use some more space. Uh, we primarily operate outside of business hours. Um, in fact, even the application, I believe I put in 5 to 9 and then in the morning and then 5 to 8 p.m. But in light of seeing that some of these businesses actually open at 8 a.m., our business plan will actually switch to I'm only me, John, So you actually close down after your morning classes? We, so currently we have a 12, a, a 12, so yes, then we, we do a 12 uh, p.m. class and a 4 p.m. class. Gotcha. If we are able to get into this building, we will lose those classes. We will only operate 5, 6, and 7 a.m. classes and 5, 6, 7 p.m. classes. Um, so that's the business model that we would like to go to. Um, and yeah, so and y'all would be willing to accept that as a, as a stipulation? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. We would only offer classes those six, six times. Um, we would ask for an exemption on the weekends. Um, we, we do a 9 a.m. class currently, and we do a lot of fundraiser type thing, marathons um, with the aforementioned groups. Um, so it'd be nice to have Saturday, Sunday availability to do those as well. Um, but if that were a big concern for the opposition, I'd be willing to entertain that. Um, so when I spoke with the leaseholder here, I told him that was my idea. Um, I thought it would alleviate the parking issue because um, most of our people will be there outside of business hours. Uh, we found that over 80% of our uh, clientele now, we thought were coming from Forest Acres. They're actually coming from Shandon near Fun. Uh, five points, several are students, so they were pretty excited about the idea that they could bike, they could run. Uh, these, our, this is what our clientele does. We are, we are bikers, we are runners, uh, we're healthy. Understood. So could I get you to run through the criteria for, for, for the uh, uh, special exception, just so we can kind of... And just going through there. one, yeah, one through eight one. like the yep. others have done? Okay. Yep. Uh, describe what way the special exception not have a substantial adverse impact on vehicular traffic or vehicular and pedestrian traffic, how adequate provisions are made in the proposed exemption for parking and for loading and unloading. Um, we have made an agreement to lease the required 10 spaces. Um, I actually see 12, but I think some people see 10. Either way, there's enough um, to, to be granted the special excep exception. Um, I don't actually think that we will need that. Um, but I arranged, uh, I haven't signed a lease on either 902 Harden Street or 926 yet. I wanted to make sure we got approved first, but the, the lease that we have for the 10 parking spaces, right now it says nine months just to get us through the end of this year. It's my understanding that I will have to reapply for a business license and prove that I have parking in order to get a business license next year. It's also my understanding that if we lose that parking for any reason, we will then have to come and apply for a variance, not a special exception. Um, is that correct, or am I assuming correctly with those? Yep. I think okay. That's correct. Yep. Would you like me to continue with number two? Okay. Describe in what ways the proposed special exception will not have substantial adverse impact on adjoining properties in terms of environmental factors such as noise, lights, glare, vibration, fumes, odors, obstruction of air, or light and litter. Um, the only thing I could see that would fall in there is music. We like to have music when we work out. I think most people do, um, but we're a, a community-based organization. I mean, that's what we are. That's what all of my businesses are. So we provide, we, we pride ourselves in positively impact, impacting the environment. There's nothing adverse about any of the businesses that I have, and this will be no different. In fact, this will be a particularly positive uh, impact on the community, um, especially even the neighbors around us. I mean, we, we found that when we were talking about this location with our members, many of them already use these services including me. I take my dogs to her. Um, his mother-in-law goes to City Yoga. Um, so that's my answer, number two. All right. Great. Uh, number great. three, describe in what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial first aspect on the aesthetic character of the area to include a review of the orientation and spacing of the buildings. Um, the building is pretty old. Um, in my opinion, it's actually, it's kind of an eyesore. I mean, these guys have done a nice job of building the area around it. It's my understanding that the owner of this particular building is kind of holding out. You can probably elaborate, but I, I feel like she should just sell it to these guys and let them do what they want, but they won't, and I think that's part of the issue here. Um, in any case, I don't know what we're able to do. Um, what we did at Forest Drive CrossFit, um, we only have two parking spaces assigned to us, and there's 
crazy issues with parking. If you guys know where the Jimmy yeah, John's yeah, and um, there are always parking issues. For, uh, fortunately, because of the hours we operate, we're not a part of that problem. But that is also an older building that we can't really do much with. Uh, there's been some opposition to that. So we just went to our neighbors and said, hey guys, do you mind if we put some plants up and make it look a little bit more inviting here? It's kind of a rundown place. And so I would offer the same thing to my neighbors. I would say, hey guys, is there anything we can do to make this look better? Uh, that's within the legal parameters of what we can and, and can't do within five points uh, without structurally changing the building because I won't have the ability to do that. Uh, number four, describe the ways in which the proposed special exception will not have an adverse impact on public safety or create nuisance conditions detrimental, did I say detrimental to? I think that's a uh, typo. The public interest or conditions likely to result in increased law enforcement response. Um, we're actually trying to do the opposite. I mean, I, I was actually in the bar game down in Five Points several years ago, um, and I'm way beyond that. And um, I, I like the fact that there are new businesses popping up that are trying to give people alternative reasons to come down to Five Points, um, like some of the businesses you guys have over here. Um, so we're going to try and give students, young professionals, different things to do early morning, late night. Let's, let's work out. Let's be healthy. Let, let's not drink. So well that's, said. That's my answer. Number five. Explain how the establishment of the proposed special exception does not create a concentration or proliferation of the same or similar types of special exception use, which concentration may be detrimental to the development or redevelopment of the area in which the special exception use is proposed to be developed. Um, I don't even know if I understood that completely, but uh, basically because of the hours that we operate, it's going to minimize the concentration of that exception. I think that kind of is enough said there. Number six, explain how the proposed special exception is consistent with the character and intent of the underlying district as indicated in the zoning district description with any applicable zoning overlay district goals and requirements. Um, I've listed here that kind of what I touched on, five points appears to be moving away from cheap bars and underage drinking. I see a lot of that in the newspaper. I see a lot of it on Facebook. Um, the addition of Pure Bar and City Yoga down there, they're, they're similar types of businesses to ours, but they mainly cater to females. Um, we're males and females, and, and I think it's going to fit in with what they're trying to do, just add a little bit different clientele than what those clientele are, are, are doing down there. So we would intend to, to enhance the district goals that are already in place there. Okay, number seven. Number seven. Describe how. Uh, describe how the proposed special exception is appropriate for its location and compatible with the permitted uses adjacent to and vicinity of the property. Uh, pretty much the same answer I just gave. We've, we've got very similar values as a lot of the new businesses that are, that are going on down there, uh, especially considering that a lot of our patrons already frequent the establishments that are directly around us. Your city yoga, your bombshell, um, the vet, I mean, we, we, uh, Chick-fil-A, that's, that's kind of a staple for uh, CrossFitters. So. Uh, that's my answer for number seven. Number eight, explain in what ways the proposed special exception will not adversely affect the public interest. Um, we're going to provide a healthy option in five points for people to, to do things other than to, to drink, which has been a very hot topic lately. Um, we want to create marathons. We want to support our neighbors, our businesses. Um, everything that we do is going to be community oriented. If for no other reason next year or the year after or whenever, if, if we lose parking, I need these guys to stand next to me and say, hey, board, please allow these guys to be here. Give them a variance next time because they've done what they said they would do. Um, and I understand they would be skeptical now because of what has happened to them in the past. But um, my argument is that we're, we're providing the, the, mo the minimum impact that that building could provide on the neighboring. Any questions from the applicant board? Um, so uh, what do you call your classes? Are you calling them group fitness classes or what did you? What do we call them? What? Your you refer to it as your classes that are they're hour long and they go five, six, they're, and seven? They're usually 40 to 45 minutes or so. Um, there's usually a stretching 15 minute. portion, 15 minutes of strength, and a 15 minute workout. So generally 40 minutes or so. And you call that like a group fitness class or what do you call it? Uh, yeah, it's the WOD, they call it the workout of the day. So W-O-D is the acronym they use there. 
Um, and most CrossFits, uh, that's, that's pretty standard in how they run those. It's, uh, okay. it's an affiliate. It's not exactly a franchise, but it's an affiliate. Okay. What other questions do you guys have for me? Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor or against this application? Hi. I'm Nancy Alano, and I own Five Points Veterinary Clinic, which is right next door at 900 Hardin. Mm -hmm. And I own everything up into that building. I have three places in front, five in the back, which is not a lot to run a business. I've owned the clinic since 1995. I make my employees park in the public parking so that we can leave all the spots for our clientele. I went through the cell phone in the furniture store where they kept parking in my parking lot, blocking my driveway, and no matter how much I called, how much I asked them, how many signs I put in, I was always having to stop doing my business to come out and deal with that. So I like Tony. I don't have anything against this business, but I work out a lot. My class at 5 a.m. in the morning is 30 people large. My business starts at 8 o'clock. If you know the veterinary business, it is really busy in the morning with people dropping off and going to work. So the majority of my business is probably from 8 until 9, and 90% of the time I get there at 8, somebody's waiting at the door for me. And then we're really busy from 4 until 5.30 when we close. So that's gonna cause a big problem I see for me. And the other thing is, is a lot of my job is listening. So when you're having music next door, I can't escort heart murmurs and stuff like that. I'm gonna have to move to the interior buildings. Dogs don't like traffic. They don't like loud noises and especially cats. So that will impact my business also. And nobody asked me before they put the sign up and that's how I found out about this business. Is your is your property um, the residential structure to the the white residential structure on the corner? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, uh, my name is uh, Brad Collins. I'm a professor at the university and co-owner uh, with my wife of City Yoga. Um, we are here to speak against this variance. Uh, we have been a tenant of. Uh, we are a tenant and. Diagonally behind, we have a very large facility diagonally behind uh, this site. We have been a tenant there for 10 years, uh, and as Mr. Thompson can tell you, um, we have uh, heavily invested in this property, um, in the renovations of this property, and in the upkeep of this property. Uh, we have about 40 classes per week, uh, beginning early in the morning, running until um, our latest is about 7, 7.30 p.m. Uh, and we operate that seven days a week. Uh, 40 classes, we service about 400 clients per week, and those clients depend on ample parking. Now, for the most part, um, the, the parking is quite ample, but there are certain times during the week, especially uh, in midweek, especially in the late afternoon and the early evening, when the parking, is, parking lot is pretty much full, and some of our students are required to find street parking. Um, as Mr. Caboni said, these are also going to be times that they are busy times as well, five, six, and seven. Um, and as his application states, what he's providing and what he's promising is remote parking. Um, now, um, that's a serious problem. Um, now, many of his clients, I'm sure, will observe that and they will park 237 feet away uh, and walk to his studio. Um, but common sense tells us that many of his clients will not park remotely. If there is a parking spot available behind his building, they will use it. Uh, quite frankly, uh, and for, for our busy times, this is going to create a very, very serious problem. Mr. Carboni has said... Is, your, is the parking designated? Does it say parking for city yoga only? It does not. It does not. They, we share the parking with several other businesses there, Bombshell, uh, the, uh, the, the frame, there's a frame shop there. Uh, there is uh, um, also um, the, uh, what, Polymoris, Polymoris is there, 
and there's also a, um, a, a sister facility of ours uh, called Upstream. So there are several businesses that we share uh, this space with, and quite comfortably, and, uh, and, quite am uh, and quite amply, but again, we don't have infinite parking back there. Uh, Mr. Caboni has tried to make you believe, uh, and perhaps he does believe, that this will be uh, a minimum impact. This will create a minimum impact on the neighboring businesses. That is complete nonsense. Uh, that is going to create a very serious problem for us. He's described it as a, his own problem as a very real parking problem. Well, the very real parking problem is going to be our problem. <laughs> and it will, Thank you for your testimony. It'll, seriously, it'll seriously hurt our business, and we urge you to reject this plan. Not only is it unreasonable, but unworkable. Thank you very much for your time. Anyone else? Good afternoon. My name is Charles Thompson. I am the owner of the property that is immediately adjacent to the north and east of the subject property at 902 Harden. Um, we, this is a complex of five buildings and over 20,000 feet uh, that we have invested in quite heavily. I'm here uh, to speak in opposition to this special exception, uh, and that objection is primarily driven by this change of use. Uh, the change in use is the very thing that's driving this need for the special exception. Uh, we need to be clear here that the building itself of, uh, at 902 Harden Street occupies 100% of the landmass. So there is zero parking. It's not as if he's asking for some relief or supplemental parking. There is no parking. So no use, basically nothing, no use that requires any parking could park there without off, off some type of arrangement for off-site parking, right? Not as far as I'm concerned. Uh, any existing use... Or, or use that is consistent with the existing zoning or the, zone, or the use that was in place until now is permissible. Uh, those types of uses have dynamic parking loads in that people come and go, they shop very quickly, they move on. The very nature of this uh, applicant's business is for classes, classes where people stay for an hour and they stay okay. in large yeah. numbers. John, let me just put the pause button for a second. I have a question for staff. So there is zero parking here. Is this, does this zoning of this facility uh, allow any use that doesn't require? How it works is right? there is an existing conditions mm -hmm. section of the ordinance to where if it was a use that requires three per 1,000 or less, they wouldn't have to provide any parking. It would be what they could provide on the site, which in this case would be nothing. But because this is a use that provide that requires five per one thousand, that is why we're here today. Is they're gotcha. responsible to. So how many? How, how large is spaces. this? How large is the building? They, um, according to the application, they're leasing twenty five hundred square feet for the. Six thousand square feet. Gym. But the building is six thousand square feet. But the actual gym use is only going to be twenty five hundred. Right. They're going to be limited to that per their application. What about the rest of the, the building? Can it be leased uh, to anyone that needs only three per, any, any use that's three Existing per thousand? conditions would come in at that point, yes. Okay. Or if another use came in for that portion. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I think the size of the building is very relevant to this discussion. I think there's uh, virtually no way to, to police how much space that, he, the applicant occupies 6,000 feet. He said by his own admission that he occupies 1,700 now, and that's not nearly enough. Um, so I think he's reverse engineered this, this whole parking program. He found 10 spaces. He backs into the number of how much square feet he can occupy. And the lease that he has uh, that's unexecuted on the remote parking is, uh, does have a 30-day cancellation provision in it. That property has been sold to a California concern for redevelopment, and it's only a matter of time before it is redeveloped. I want to reserve some time, though, for my attorney, if I may. He can, he can speak separately. Oh, well, Thank I want you. to point out, too, because Charlie made a good point about the, uh, the lease. It's unusual in that it has a 30-day cancellation right in favor of the landlord. That's pretty doggone unusual. That means we have a 30-day lease and a potential enforcement problem. We 
might have the resources. I mean, that, I understand what you're saying, but I mean, mean the lots of parking that are on 30 day. I mean, there's like most of the parking garages are 30 day month to month. My, my parking lot is a month to month lease. It's 30 days. I've been there for 10 years. Right, but it counts on you to renew it, right? In most circumstances. No, the landlord can revoke my term, okay. term on 30 days notice. And, but I mean, I've been actually I've been there for 25 years. Okay, well noted. Um, as far as this proliferating the special exception uh, uses that we have, when uh, we absorb the parking at 926 Harden Street, it's going to be non-compliant. It will need off-street. It'll need some additional parking to be drawn from somewhere off-site. This creates a domino effect, which ultimately will come home to roost one day with some redevelopment problems when we have this tangled web of off-site parking arrangements. Uh, there's also a public safety component here, too, in that I'm a former CrossFit person. I, I have engaged in this group. I, I respect it. I think they do good things, but I'm afraid this isn't the right place given what they do. There's often an outdoor component to these workouts. Um, I can invite you to look at the Forest Drive Facebook website. There's simply no common area available for these folks to uh, perform their outdoor components. So where is that going to occur? Well, I think there are only two options. One, it's going to occur on the sidewalk. That's dangerous. We have people out there shopping. They don't need to have somebody plow them over with a kettlebell in hand. Or hopefully, but probably more realistically, they're going to take over the back parking area, which is my client's property. My client then is forced to confront, <coughs> you know, patrons of the business, the tenant, call law enforcement. That's a drag on the resources of the city. This becomes very difficult. Um, you know, the intent here is not to be obstructionist. It's just that the proposed use and the means for accomplishing it are going to create problems that are foreseeable. And I think one of the primary objectives of zoning and zoning regulation is to avoid those things, to avoid the conflicts on the front end. I, I kind of agree with you there, but uh, you know, the property right now has zero parking spaces, and yet. Uh, a person requiring 18 parking spaces could go right in. A pro, excuse me, a person. A, a, a business that, that can, can, can actually require 18 parking spaces, could have 18 employees for that matter, um, could, could go into this building without the need for a special exception and outright and use it. So I'm not sure how, you know, um, a situation where you've got a, 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 a different use that actually has off-site parking is, is necessarily, um, uh, uh, I think that that, that could be conceived, conceived as, as trying to solve a problem because clearly, um, you know, a building this size with zero parking is an issue. Well, I think it's the intermittent use of the patrons that will come there that creates the problem. For example, if that were used for an office space, well, it wouldn't be unreasonable for employees of the business to park up. They leave their car there all day. They walk up back and forth once a day, twice a day. Here, there's going to be a great temptation for folks to park in, author in authorized places. You know, the thought process, we've probably all done it. No harm, no foul. I'll just be in and out. Well, if you have the existing patrons of the lawfully parked people on the heritage investment property uh, coming in at similar times, and then a, a same number of folks coming in to do CrossFit workouts, that's going to impact those businesses that are doing things the right way. Property owner is inviting those businesses to be fruitful and to be good members of Five Points, and it's just going to create a hardship that they're going to be very hard pressed to overcome. Well, I think appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, I, I was asking you questions, so is there any other statements that you wanted to make or points that you wanted to make? That's it for, for the moment, unless for some reason for us to respond. Is there anyone else? Charlie, do you want to come back and get the balance of your three minutes? Come on. Thirty seconds. You know, I, I neglected to mention that uh, the applicant has not contacted me in any respect to, to uh, voice circumstances of, of this application. Uh, the first I learned of it was actually seeing the zoning sign posted on the building. Um, 
we've created a, a very special place that we call Village Five, this, this complex of five buildings. And quite frankly, there were many people in the commercial real estate industry that thought I was absolutely crazy to do what I did. And it only works if it stays in balance. It's a, it's a, it's a ballet. We have uh, received a variance for parking uh, for, for a mixture of uses, and that's how that variance was afforded to us. Um, and so it's this uh, careful selection of different uses of the different buildings within the complex that allows this ballet to take place. And this particular use uh, that is before you today will throw this out of balance and cause it to wobble. And so my tenants who are heavily invested for long term end up having to move out because they can't tolerate it anymore, only to find that the short term applicant gets his way and then maybe he goes away. And then we've got nothing. We've, we've got neither the long term or the short term. And, and I, I just uh, would, would encourage you to think about the dynamics at play here and uh, the fact that we're sort of centurions in this, this neighborhood and it can be pretty rough there and everything's peaceful and we don't have it littered with no trespassing or no parking or no this and no that. Everything works. It's an oasis in five points and all of my tenants are deeply concerned about uh, this application. I have to agree. I understand what your concerns are. Um, my, but my thinking on this is that the applicant has, and, and if this were going to be approved, it would be stipulated that, that, the, the, that they would, he would have to have the off-site parking. So if he loses his lease for off-site parking, he would have to be, he would have to find 15 more spaces somewhere remotely to get in order to do that, I mean, we can we can make it stipulated on the fact that he has to have 15 spaces of off-site parking, right? 10 or whatever it is uh, of off-site parking. Um, and if he loses his off-site parking, then then basically the special exception is is void. So um, I don't know. I mean, I, I understand what your concerns are, but but from five to eight, and I, that's that to me. You know, it's not. It's going to have very little, maybe a little bit with you, but I don't know that it's going to have a huge impact on everybody. I mean, you don't have any parking either. <laughs> Doesn't look like there. And so, uh, but here's a building. What you know? What if somebody comes in that have 18 parking spaces all all the time? You know, from 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 five to six. I mean, you're going to wish you had this back. I mean, it's a it's a great use for um, you know. Uh, a, a short period of time in the morning, short period of time in the afternoon. Um, but uh, yeah, like to, it, I understand. I mean, it's a it's a it's a tough one because I mean, they're they're that building has no parking whatsoever. May I clarify on the yeah? Parking go ahead. Location. You can. Uh, City Yoga does have parking. We have a total of fifty five spaces there and uh, nearly twenty thousand feet of leasable area. So we reserve the right to assign parking on a prorated basis. And my lease with City Yoga uh, requires that I provide a certain number of spaces that are consistent with his prorated share of the available spaces. Right, and then y'all, you said you got some variances for certain uses? No, a variance for the parking. Variance for the parking. You mean because of the, what was the variance for? Total number of spaces per leasable area. For, for leasable area. So what we're doing is we're inserting uh, a use that's attempting to obtain a special exception for parking uh, immediately adjacent to one that has already received uh, a variance for parking. I, you know, the, the applicant by his own admission. Uh, right. Does not yeah, have the scale. parking's tight, and so the question is. Will the business be able to, um, in that early morning, use the public parking that's available by five points and the off-site parking that he's got available without encroaching on y'all's property? And I think that that's handled by signage. <laughs> you have signage on your parking now that says who can park there and towing enforcement and all that? That's, that's shifting the enforcement burden over to me and the zoning. Do you have a contract with a towing towing company that yeah. comes and tows cars that aren't 
so part of that. When my tenants pull in to park in the morning, these spaces are going to be occupied by uh, the applicant's patrons. Uh, look, you know, he, he's going to have 10, 10 spaces. Uh, that means 10 people. The classes are considerably more than 10 people at a time. There's no way he can make business at 10. He, he knows he, this, is, this is premeditated violation of parking. This is, this is just to get through the requirements. Okay. Well, I mean, those are the requirements, though, right? Yeah, he's only required to provide 10 spaces. That's all he's required to provide. Because he intends or is stating that he's only going to occupy a, a corresponding amount of square footage, which is roughly one-third of the building. We do have the other issue of, of trespass. Uh, as uh, Attorney Lee has indicated, there is an outdoor component to every CrossFit um, location that is around. And, and how are we going to stop that from being in the parking lot? So the only remedy I have for trespass is to call the police. I, you can imagine what this, this life is like. Or someone pulls in and I say, look, you can't. I would stand out there and say, I'm going to tow you. And imagine the conflict that comes from that. Somebody is in a, in a hurry, is a bodybuilder who's going into a, uh, an exercise facility. It's, it's not going to be pretty or fun. <coughs> we don't have this problem with retail. It is, it is particular to this use, and it's, adjacent to, it's immediate adjacency to another use that also has these peak times for classes, and that being City Oak. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Would you like to come back up with the dating? Just wanted to address some of the concerns. Um, first of all, I didn't make it clear. Our business model is predicated upon a 10 person per class max. That is what makes us different than all the other CrossFits out there. So I hope that makes you guys feel a little bit easier about things is that in their worst case scenario where people are breaking the law and parking in places they shouldn't be, it should be 10 people per max. If nobody runs, if nobody bikes, if they all drive. Uh, and that's something that we intend to, to keep, 10 class max. That, that's what we do. Um, the 2,500 square feet is actually a little bit less than that. This was based on the lease that was shown to me by the leaseholder. That is the retail, uh, the front part of that. You can see it's kind of uh, split into two. Uh, it's a little under 2,500 square feet that is heated um, and cooled, has HVAC. The back is like a warehouse that gets crazy hot in the summers, crazy cool in the winters. I don't think anybody would ever want to work out there. That's why we are not leasing that part of the space. Uh, and the same deal with the outside. They, they brought up a point that I made before they got up there is that our space is so small now that we're forced to operate outside sometimes. I don't think it's very safe to operate outside, you know, other than jogging, um, like you said, throwing kettlebells around. The reason we want the space is so that we can do everything inside. Um, and so it seems like the only issue that they have is that our clientele might not follow the law. They might, you know, break the law and they mentioned having to call law enforcement. And I know that could be a pain, but I, I like to think that most of what we do is based on the fact that people will actually follow the law, um, especially when we're the ones, you know, running our clients uh, or, or is responsible for them. So that's all I wanted to say if there are no more questions. So, um... So 10, 10 people per class, yes, max. Sir. Yep. So, um, I mean, are you willing to have that as a stipulation? Sure. In your, in your request that you only have 10 people per class? Absolutely. Okay. And, and, and further that your, um, you only have the three classes, five, six and seven 45 minute classes in the morning and six, seven and eight 45 minute classes in the afternoon. Correct, now they're, they're 40 to 55. I don't want to lock myself into 46 minutes gets me kicked out, but they're designed for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. There are no classes that are designed for more than 55. What about um, the concerns of trespass and common area and things like that? Trespassing as far as like working out in their, their parking lot? Uh, that's not going to happen. I'm willing to sign uh, something that says anything that touched their parking lot, they can take, it's their property. So if somebody throws a barbell out there, it's theirs. Uh, but the whole reason we want this extra space is so that we can do everything inside. 
A big reason why we do 10 people per class is that CrossFit has a very bad reputation of people getting hurt. Uh, there's one, um, locally, it's one of the largest ones in South Carolina. People get hurt every week because they pack 25, 35 people in a class. You can't see them. If you've got people outside, you can't watch them. We need people right where we can see them. They get one-on-one -on -one instruction, and 10 is a max. So absolutely, we're not going to be working out outside other than a, a jog to, you know, if that's part of the wad. Well, there is a, I see that, that, you mean there is a fairly substantial public park, you know, a block and a half from that location. A public park, I'm sorry? Uh, Martin Luther King Park, I mean, it's right there, right there, block and a half down Pavilion. Okay. That would be available, sure, but we, we don't intend to do anything outdoors, especially considering uh, if we're granted, we would be moving in sometime in the summer. Uh, August, even September, it, it's, it's not safe to be doing something that intense uh, in heat like that. It needs to be a controlled ambient environment. Okay, is there any other questions? Thank you for your testimony. You. Would you like to come back up, sir? There's one thing I would be hopeful that the applicant could clarify because there's a lot of focus on the class times. What I think we're missing here is that most CrossFit locations I know of, you have people that come at all times, frequently, uh, to do their own workouts. The workouts are posted, the workout wides, as he calls them, workout of the day. You can go to the, go on the CrossFit website and you'll see the daily workout. Yesterday it included a 400 uh, meter run, uh, which I wonder where that's going to occur. Uh, but just to focus on the classes, I think, misses the issue here because there's going to be continual use as people come. There may be groups of folks that have decided just to work out together on a regular basis. Focus on the class really um, does a disservice to the consideration of the potential problem that we may face here. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you very much. Very good point. Would you like to come back up one more time? Staff, I do have to say that this is a permitted use. This is not a special exception for the use. It is a special Just exception the parking. for the parking. Right. And I also am willing. I mean, I need good neighbors. I, I, we can't do what we want to do and, and have these people believe we don't want everybody's best interest at hand. I'm willing to concede that we will not have more than 10 people also for an open gym session or whatever would happen, what he's referring to. We don't have this at our current space now. We don't do any open gym, so it's just closed when it's closed. Um, if we're only running these classes before and after normal business hours, I do want the right to have other people come in, especially since I have 10 parking spaces for those 10. But I, I will concede that we'll cap it at 10 for anything other than class times as well. So we don't want to slide in on a loophole and all of a sudden you got 30 people in. Yeah, so I'm, I want to make sure I understand. So I thought that this was the, oper the hours of operation were like first thing in the morning and right after work. Right. And now you're saying that it's open all day. It's not open all day. There are classes 5 to 8 and classes 5 to 8 again. Um, I'd like to reserve the right to have people do an open gym or come in throughout the day to at least access the space. I mean, I, I know I will. I'm actually going. And I think that gets back into if no one's there to monitor that, how do you know if you're going to have 10 people or 30 people there if you're not there? Well, there's never going to be somebody there that's not uh, an owner or managing partner of the space. There, there's not, not going to be people with keys that can just go in and work out when they want to. And since there's nothing outside, they would have to access inside. But it's going to be open all day. It, so basically, it's going to be open from 5 a.m. to, what was the end time, 6, 7? No, I mean, right now, Mark is the only coach that we have. Um, he coaches, he goes back, takes care of his kid, comes back, coaches, does some things on the side. He's not going to be there from 4.30 in the morning till at night every day nonstop. Um, I just don't want to pigeon, pigeonhole us not into being able to not even use it at all during those times. Well, do you have the uh, do you have the parking is leased throughout the entire day? Yes, the parking is is ours uh, nonstop. So I guess my only comment would be, I mean this. Seems like you, this is a good business. It's very well thought out. And clearly, I mean, you know what you're doing. But and please don't take this question any, you know, in the wrong way at all. But have, it does seem to me like it's a little force for this location. I mean, have you looked at other spaces, or is this one particularly attractive to you? Um, you 
know, I, I guess I'm just curious, why go to all this trouble to go here? I mean, is this your only option? Or it just seems to me like there could be a better place for this business than here. Right. How about um, Vine Street? <laughs> how about the Zaxby's? That tire store. No, seriously, maybe. seriously. And I don't mean that in any way. I mean, sure, I know no, you know no, what no. you're doing. Um, what is, is it a valid a, question. For, for us, site? it is the perfect location. When I found out it came open, we have been looking for spaces like this, especially in the Forest Acres area, since a lot was damaged in the flood uh, a couple years ago. Um, so some of these warehouse type places, this building has high ceilings, mm -hmm. which is very good for pull-ups, um, muscle-ups. That's one of the issues we have now. Uh, we got a tight space and there aren't really high ceilings. So we can't even do a lot of the movements that other CrossFit gyms can, whereas this building has higher ceilings than we do. It is a freestanding building. So if we were to drop weights, if we were to play some music, it's not going to affect tenants like it would in a strip mall. Right now, we're in that strip mall. We can't really play music very loud. The programming is really tough because uh, our neighbors are only not there on Mondays. So we drop weights on Mondays. The rest of the week, we do things that don't make a lot of noise. Um, and I was just familiar with the space. So when it came open uh, at about a half of market rent, less than much less than what we're paying now, mm -hmm. that made it even more attractive. So I certainly understand your yeah. question. I hope that, that answers it. It does. I guess, you know, you just brought up, and I, I am concerned about your effect on your adjacent veterinarian neighbor with the music. I mean, that, that really kind of concerns me, you know. Well, I would say that, again, we are, are going to be indoors, uh, and you, it's adjacent, but it's not connected. It at least is freestanding, and there certainly is a difference there. I know that we could uh, certainly have some sort of negative impact if we play loud, loud music, but that's not the intent. I know that's not the intent, but... I think that is a real concern to me is, is how close their property is to this site. I, I hear you. Would that fall more into the, um, the issue of the type of business that's there and not just the, the parking maybe, area? Maybe so. Maybe I mean, so. Would, would you um, agree with that? Maybe so. But well, it's maybe not. Well, Gene can answer that. But in, your, in the application, you said that there are be no more than five people inside before 9 a.m. and after 5 p.m. And I, I just, again, I just went on your, the, the CrossFit website. Um, um, what was that? I'm sorry. Let me get the application. Number one on page two of three in the special exception application. And so my concern is, is that doesn't jive with what you're saying. The only times we have more than five people inside is before 8 a.m. and after 5 p.m. That's, that's exactly what I've said, I believe. Let me make sure I'm not having a little dyslexia. So after so, 9 a.m., between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., there'll be no more than five people inside that building. There haven't been with, with uh, our current No, but I'm plan. just asking that that's what you're saying. So there will not be any more than five people inside the building between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., correct? Sure. We had discussed 10 previously, but if it looks like it should be five, then I'm willing to concede to five. I mean, we're not gonna have classes there. I just wanna reserve the right for people that need extra help or wanna do extra stretching to be able to come in with him. But some who's gonna the be day. there to prevent more than five people? And maybe I've just got a misunderstanding about how the business works. The doors but, but, are locked, so the doors only open when we have class. Right now, but if you want it open during the day, do people call the train? I mean, how, how, how does that work? Appointment only. He, he does um, separate training, separate stretching, um, things for money on the side. It would be by appointment only. It wouldn't be a standing like, hey, the doors are unlocked. You guys come. He will have a key. I will have a key. And as of now, nobody else will have a key. This business will be closed from eight until five. But I say that I don't want to be kicked out if he meets with somebody one-on-one -on -one or if we have less than five people doing something. That's all I'm trying to prevent. Where are the other locations? The, the other CrossFit locations or there is one off of Bluff Road. But those, aren't, those aren't yours? No, no, no. These are affiliates. So we, we only have one of the CrossFits. This is the only one we have. And that's where? Forest Drive CrossFit, right on Forest Drive next to Jimmy John's. From Strobler and Groucho's, I believe. Right. So why wouldn't he be having people going there during the day, where you've got more? You don't have such an issue with parking. We we just don't really need it right now. Um, we we have our 12 o'clock and our 4 o'clock classes where we usually have two to five people. Um, I think 
those people would be willing to either go to the morning or later classes or come throughout the day in groups of five or less, which they're already doing. Um, maybe for those people it would be at 12 if that's when they're coming. But again, I'm willing to have that as part of the stipulation that you know, I'm not trying to, to get around this whole thing. I'm not trying to be sneaky here. I mean, there are classes. I want people to be able to come in during the day, but only when the trainer is there. Not, it's not going to be open during the day, and there aren't going to be classes during the day. Okay, I'm um, got to wrap it up. <laughs> so, um, is there any any board discussion? I think I'm really really torn on this one. I think um, I think you know what you're doing. I think you've got a very good business plan and a good business. And I'm afraid that my biggest concern is something we can't even vote on today. Anyway, uh, I, I don't think it. I don't think this is a good fit for this particular building. I really don't. I don't like how close the veterinarian's office is to it and the future plans of the center to the north. So I really don't think it's a good fit, but I don't think we can vote on that. So um, I think my biggest concern is something, you know, that we can't even vote on. So we're left with do we allow the special exception to, or, you know, does it meet the criteria to allow the special exception to lease the off site parking? So um, with that being said, I'm not sure that I can justify a reason why it, it doesn't. And I understand all of your concerns because I have the same concerns, especially with the veterinarian office. I would, I would just like to reiterate, if there's any way, and I know people want to work out the music, but any way you can keep the music down, if you are granted this special exception, it would be very much appreciated because I can understand how that's a, a serious concern. I agree with uh, I agree with Gene. Uh, I, I am a little concerned about the the veterinarian um, uh, next door. While you can control the volume of the music, you just turn it off. But you also mentioned <coughs> dropped weights. You know, uh, that's kind of a concern for me too. If you that kind of impact and sudden sound, you know, could very well affect something that they're doing next door. I too am a little concerned about that. It does sound like you have a it's thought out. It does sound like you have a good business plan, but uh, I agree that it might not be the best fit for for that particular location. And that's you know that's not what we're right, here to right, decide. Exactly, so exactly, it's really, exactly. As hard as it, you know, we're taking it on the camp, we really can't base our opinion on that. On that, exactly. And I'm excited to work with those guys on making those. Okay, I'd like to throw out a, a motion. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we approve um, this request for a special exception based on the testimony of the applicant and the written um, application um, with um, the following stipulations. That um, on Monday through Friday, they will have only six group classes, three uh, group classes in the morning from 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and 7 a.m., 45 minutes in duration each, and three in the evenings, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and 8 p.m., 45 minutes each. And that the applicant maintains um, 10, uh, that, that each class will be limited to 10 persons per class. Um. It was actually five, six, and seven. It was five to eight. Could we? I'm sorry, five, five six, and seven, and what? Um, and five, six, and seven. So five to eight, five to eight, both, both times. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, so five at five. So five, six, and seven. Five, six, and seven, both times. Right. Yes, in sir. the morning and the night, no more than ten um, customers or clients in each class, and that the um, uh, <coughs> applicant will maintain um, uh, control of 10 off-site parking spaces 
um, in the uh, general vicinity of the um, uh, business at all times. It's my motion. Okay, there's a motion made. There's not been a second. Does anybody else like to make a motion? Can somebody either second my motion or please make another motion so that we don't have to stay here all day? Motion. Um, this is for 902 and 926 Harden Street, case number 2018-0032, special exception. Um, make it uh, a motion to deny the special exception. Um, been running through the eight criteria. Um, think that this will have an adverse impact on vehicular um, and pedestrian safety. Um, I just don't think that there are enough safeguards from the, the applicant to, to prevent that. Um, the public safety and nuisance conditions, um, are just, it just ties in with number one, with the, with the public safety, with um, the potential to have um, not only people outside, but but to you know to put other property owners in a position where they've got to potentially, or it sounds like in the in the past they've had to confront people um, to to ask them not to park on on their property, on private property. Um, I just don't think it's compatible. Um, it's not appropriate for this location. Um, not compatible with the permitted uses adjacent to and in the vicinity of the property. And um, I guess I should have spoke up more in board discussion, but um, I don't think it does Im impact the public interest. So um, my motion is to deny the special exception. Okay, is motion to deny? Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed? No. Motion carries. Yep. Ooh, boy. There are no other matters to discuss today. Mm. Uh, thank you, Rachel. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion carries.